condition. But both sides want to play the best sides in the competition, don't yep. they? So here we are. We've got two of the best playing today, nearly at full strength. Conditions are perfect. Um, I'm just looking forward to And it's going to be a key position player. I don't care what Scud says. It's going to be... I'm oh, sorry, you, you say it's yep. going to be a key position player. You think the key position player makes a difference? I'm putting my uh, neck on the line with McLaren for sale as the player that stands up and really turns the table. But time will tell, won't we? There's uh, any what number of probably a dozen or a dozen and a half players that could stand oh, up today. Uh, and this is the time when your good players do Absolutely. stand up. Number one stats man in the business. All thanks to Gippsland Isuzu Ute. The new D-Max, a beautiful vehicle it is. I drove one here this afternoon. It's born to live and born to tow. Mm -hmm. And it's available at Gippsland Isuzu Ute. They're on the Princess Highway in Terrelgan. LMCT 10285 is Paul Carter. Good afternoon to you, Paul. Good afternoon, Daryl, boys and listeners. And this has this really set up. Um, th these teams... Um, have met twice this year, round one and round eight. At, down at Wonthaggy in round one, it was an eight-point win to uh, Wonthaggy at home. And then the uh, power travelled down to the nest and did what's a very difficult thing to do. They actually beat Sale on their own home turf, but this time it was just by one point. So we are lo looking for a, an absolutely neck-and-neck -neck match this afternoon. Sale renowned as good starters. Both teams pretty similar through the middle of the great game. And uh, Wonthaggy uh, just slightly edged edged uh, sale on the um, on our quarterly ladders for final quarters. Well, Boxer and myself are going with sale to win in a close margin, and Poppy and Paul have both gone for one thaggy in the middle of the ground. Big Jack Leslie will start the ruck duties for the Magpies. He'll be up against Big Tom Ahutha out of the power. I can see in the middle of the ground Tom Davies there for the power. Ryan Sparks and Aidan Lindsay. While for the Magpies, it's Jack Johnson, Shannon Lang, and Cooper Whitehill looks to do a bit of a run with roll, perhaps maybe on Ryan Sparks. First quarter action for LV Forklifts is about to get underway and here's Rob Popplestone on TRFM. Well, you'd expect this to be pretty hot as Leslie does the ruck work, gets the first tap too but it falls in the hands of Juan Thaggy and the player there was Sparks who was taking the grand ball and all. Physicality will be the factor, the determining factor in the opening minutes of this final this afternoon. The conditions might be nice, but the uh, heat around the ball also will be hot. Lang gets a quick kick from that break. Goes inside the Ford 50 for the Magpies. They're kicking to the right of radio. The highway end of the Morwell Rec Reserve opening minute of this game and sail on the attack. But the, as I say, heat around the ball is pretty hot. The body work by both sides is intense and the last player up is Lang. Boxer, any matchups for us? You'll get to those in a moment. There's Leslie giving a hand down to it. Tried to come the other way was Ronke. Crashed his way through and squeezed the handball out there was Hootha. He got it out wide and they got some run. This time it's Davey. He's got a kick to the wing area. Over the top though, Pendery doesn't quite complete the mark. Johnson was front and square. Won the footy. Handballed in the way of Lang. He swoops on it. Gives it back to Johnson. Centre half forward. Lowers the eyes inside 50. Freeman's on his own. 45. Right foot kick. Top of the square. It goes. It's going. Going. Touched on the line or through. And the umpire goes back to the middle. As Jared Freeman gets the first of the afternoon for the Magpies, he kicked 24 in the year, and he gets the first today. And this is what happens with the great conditions. It was just quick play there by Sale, and just opened up one thaggy really on the back foot. I uh, get the ball in quickly, but there's Jared Fre like Freeman playing forward in front, you know, and he had the uh, real balance in his, in his yeah. play just to turn, and his kick did carry a fair way. We didn't think it was going to make it, but what a start there by Sale. Minute 19 seconds for the first goal to be on the ball, and the LB Forklift scored. Sale one goal straight six. So Leslie uh, getting early taps on that occasion though. Hootha got the tap. Quick kick forward it was from Lindsay. Sends the power forward. Bouncing off players but not getting a clean kick for um, uh, one thaggy was Tom Davey. The ball still going inside forward 50 now. It went from Hootha. It found Blair and they play on quickly. Can't find a winner in front of goals. The pressure's hot and it gets cleared by Pendery. Grandstand side. Race is on. One thaggy lead that race. The player there is Dawson, who gets taken over the boundary with a real hot tackle. Boundary throw in to take place, 70 metres from one thaggy's goals. Sale leading in the opening minutes of this game. One goal straight, courtesy of a nice goal by Freeman just a moment ago. As predicted, Lockie Todd has gone to uh, Troy Harley. So ball back in, Leslie taps it straight down, no one in particular, Whitehill was there, little quick kick, got through Laverty's hands, comes back the other way, been working hard, he's strong over the football, on that occasion was Hayes. 
And the big one for me, Scott, is uh, Will Leslie's gone to young Jack Hutchinson as well. That'll give him the uh, opportunity to play high as well, Will Leslie. And Jake Hutchins has got the job on Dawson as well, Boxer, as Leslie taps this one down in the way there of uh, Hayes. Gets towards the top of the 50, doesn't quite enter. Attacking this one with pace, nicely done, was Anderson. He got wrapped up in a strong tackle from Allison. And he wins the free kick from the umpire. Jaden Allison looks up. They go to centre half forward. McGuinness is the target and finds him. He gives a quick handle off to Glenane. Drives it inside forward 50. Death's in the target. Going back with a the flight there was Todd. He's come back from the back line. And flight Lieutenant Todd from the Sale Raff base can't get a hand on it. And Bray will just see it go over for a boundary throw in. 49 metres around from Sale's goal. Three minutes into the first quarter. Margin sits six probably, points. Probably the one we predicted too. Scud Bray goes to Descent too. That'll be a great ma match up for the afternoon too. And already Sale uh, signalling their intent. Playing on quickly. Moving the ball quickly. Something we haven't seen from them for a lot of this year. The tap on this occasion comes from the big man for Sale in Bray or... Bray was the one or from the Yep. So the ball inside Ford 50 for Sale at the moment. 45 metres out, 45 degree angle. They get the tap down again. It was McGuinness again. Couldn't find a teammate on that, teammate on that occasion. Fighting hard. Whitehill can't beat the boundary, I wouldn't think. Lang comes in to lend a hand. Possession number Freaky. four. Taken without the ball there. That's the call. And Lang, who's been one of the busy players early, will get a chance to go inside Ford 50. Gets to within 30. Oh! oh the leap was on from the back, but they couldn't take the mark sale. But they've got the runners around the ball. A quick kick. They need a favourable bounce. They're not going to get it. It's going to fall in the hands of Blair, who's steady under pressure. Can he find a teammate? He can. But that teammate can't take the mark. It was a brother in Jack. And now the pressure continues to build with Sale going forward. Handball more in hope than anything else. And now Sale through Whitehill. Take the ball. Beautifully done by Lang. Handballs, gets the one-two, could be an absolute beauty. Guess what? It is an absolute beauty. Goal number two, and goal number two for sale. It's a Zambrero contender for the goal of the day. It's a ripper, ripper, ripper for sure. That was an absolute ripper. Uh, just what I love about Lang, though, too, is just he, was, he, he won the ball. He runs, runs inside at full tilt. Brad Desson just did the unselfish thing, got the inside handball, too, but just had the balance. He's just got the class. He's an absolute superstar. Lang for the Sale Footy Club and what a goal that was. And we've only played five minutes into the first quarter and the LV Falkland yeah, scoreboard has Sale two goals straight 12 Oof. with that as their lead with one thing yet to score. Well, they've been efficient as they're going forward. The Magpies, the power need to get their hands on it. Hootha and Leslie again and Leslie clear tap out. Whitehill burst out of the middle of the pack and drives it towards Desson. Goes to the back in the front spot there. Couldn't quite mark it. Uh, was Johnson. Powell got some numbers. A handball gets out to Braid. He kicks down along the line and he can find a teammate down there in Noah Anderson. Is it on the half, uh, right. half back flank? It's Andy Murray. Murray. Andy Murray with that uh, man bun. Chips it over the top. Good presenting lead by Dawson. He's on true centre wing. Far side of the Mulwell Rec Reserve. It's qualifying final day. Under bright sunshine and blue skies. Great to have your company on Gippsland Line. Hutchison goes up and can take a strong mark. This time in front of Will Leslie. And the youngster from Powell has been impressive. He's been fantastic. I think just one of his um, deficiencies in his game has probably been his goal kicking. If he, uh, and I noticed that uh, at his warm up there, he was really working hard on his goal kicking as well and uh, taking shots from different areas of the inside 50. So he's dead in front. I think it's just the distance that's going to test him this time around. So jumping Jack Hutchison comes in directly in front. Six minute mark, they haven't got a goal yet. The power from 50 metres launches, puts it on its way. Has it got the distance? Yes, sir. -y. Has it got the accuracy? No. Minor score to open things up for the power. Paul Carter, LV Forklift scoreboard. It's sale two goals straight, 12, leading by 11 points. One taggy with that first score on the board, a one behind. So Pendlebury looks up at a fairly heavy zone of one thaggy players, and he's going to choose to go straight down the gullet. That's what he does, straight down the centre of the Morwell Rec Reserve and hopes that he can oh, get on the end of it. look at that. A punch from behind falls in the hand of a chain of handballs on the end of the chain. is Campbell, who goes inside, Ford 50, got the runner. Freeman, can he kick his second in the first quarter? Dances around, tries to find an opportunity to centre the ball. Guess what? He finds an opportunity with Brad Descent. Just 40 metres out, gave ground, kept possession and kept a level head. How was that? Coast to coast and the share of the ball. I love the inside assists. 
All right, the what, inside assist. What about Penderbury's wrist? Yeah, smart. He just took the risk. And, and that's when they got him behind the ball. The zone was right up high. Got him behind the ball. Smart play. Away he went. So Brad Dessen, the goal kicker of note, will kick from 45 metres in the slightest of angles. Distance or accuracy, not a problem. Brad Dessen, off the boot. Distance and accuracy, absolute 100 out of 100. Good work, Brad Dessen. Good work, Mad Pies. Game on. And you've got to talk about Freeman as well. Let's just remember, he was one-on-one. -on -one. He could have actually gone for the glory goal and he chose to kick the ball inside 50. This is what finals is all about. You do what it takes to win but make sure you have it's a, it's a team aspect that you're looking at. And that mark and goal from 40 metres out puts uh, Sale 17 points ahead, 8 minutes into the first quarter. LV Forklift scoreboard Sale 3 goals straight 18, one Thaggy 1 behind. Well, big moments brought to you by the Mall Bowling Club this afternoon and don't forget the Pot and Palmer night is tonight and it's right on one Thaggy. They do win this centre clearance. The ball have to come back, though. Blair tried to take the advantage. Ryan Sparks has been a young gun for the power side. Dead centre of a rec reserve here at Moorwell. Goes to the far side of the ground. Jack Blair will be his target. He's small, but he leads strong and hard in front of Bound. He's good at ground level. Oh, sold some candy. Lowers the eyes, and he finds nicely done Andy Murray, who oh. takes the mark. He thought about he, it. He was gone. <laughs> he was away. Well, Pendlebury closed from the other direction as well. He had some open space, and as Boxer just said, he was away. The umpire said no. Come back and have your shot, Andy Murray. Slightish angle, 45 metre kick. And we've seen him do this before. I mean, at a set shot, he's probably a lot, a lot better on the run uh, for accuracy. Well, let's have a look at it. Andy Murray must need this goal. They trail by 17 points to the power. Puts it on its way. He likes it off the boot. Does it come back enough? Yes, it does. And that's the one the power need to get things going for him. They need that spark at the nine-minute mark. And that could be it. I didn't even give him the curse enough, did I? <laughs> I mean, actually, because we've seen him in the past being a better goal kicker on the run, and I think that's what was going through the thought process when he come inside 50. But uh, good presence of mind there to go back and uh, slot a much-needed goal to one thaggy. And bringing that margin in sales favour back to 11 points at the nine-minute mark of the first quarter, it is 18 points to seven. It's hot early, Poppy. It is hot early, and uh, Sal so ringing the changes in defence as well over the, on the back of one goal. But anyway, oh, interesting. Two Quick style. flash in a moment. Uh, don't mind two players hitting each other because their intent for the ball was obvious. Oh, oh Pendlebury. Scoops in a one-hander. Behind the play, though, bit a problem. Jaden Ellison, yep. one of their playmakers, after hitting his teammate and big man Jack Leslie, has come off second best, and he's in the hand of trainers as we speak. He has a head knock, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of claret as well. He... And the other concern might be the concussion protocol that he goes into as well because he gets up a little bit groggy. Let's see what he looks like as he comes off the ground. Yeah, he's not 100%, uh, that's obvious. It's there's pretty, there's pretty no tough. claret at least, so that's uh, a good sign, but he's running off under his own accord. As this ball up happens at half forward now for the power. Tap down, that was from Hootha. We've got a secondary stoppage. Right in front of his boxer. How's he look? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It looks, it looks pretty groggy, but uh, that was a big hit too that he's copped. Well, he's a tough, tough kid. Yep. He's an Allison. He is. And Allison's are Dave all and tough. Dave, Dave and Steve. And Steve. Gee, could they play football? You're not wrong. Both of the Tigers. Favourite player of all time, Dave Allison. Yep. I like Steve as well. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> as Lang has the ball, right half back flank for Sale. Sale leading, three goals straight 18. One thaggy, one one seven. Ball to right half forward flank. Falls out the back of the pack. Clever little tap forward. Came from Sale. Jack Johnson inside forward 50. No, not quite. As the tackle's laid. And it was laid on Flynn Anderson. So yeah. they grabbed the ball, but there's not much room to wiggle. Those mid-sized players there for Sale are the ones that are really hurt one thaggy at the moment. Yeah, they've been very good around the ball, setting up all their forward movement at the moment. Play on to the call. I thought a throw. No, ball. The player held without the ball. Lucky, I thought, because the player that we speak of in Aidan Lindsay, I thought got rid of it illegally. Doesn't matter. Comes grandstand side. Can he find who? Three can't. Nice spoil it was by the big man. The real big man. Jack Leslie, who finds the boundary with that spoil right in front of his coach's box and right in front of the Gippsland live coverage. Uh, the commentary team here, Paul Carter and Daryl Cooling, Nick Lucino, Rob Popplestone and now this man, McLaren, quick kick forward. I reckon first possession of the day. Inside forward 50. Cut off nicely by Anderson. But his kick under pressure only gathered five or six metres before it's held in tight. As Travis Krause on the bottom of the pack held the ball in. In fact, that player at the bottom of the pack was Tiziani. 
who held the ball in, and there'll be a ball up right half forward flank, sailing to attack. A couple of midfielders for one thaggy, certainly slow to get going. I haven't heard much of Lindsay, and right on cue, well, there is Lindsay. Bust out of that pack. Quick handball from Murray. Now comes out towards Tiziani. His kick missed the target, but he's got some time. Does the big fella in Knowles, and a nice little neat kick down the line. Finds Travis Krauss. He looks up, goes to half forward. Dawson's on a long, searching lead. He can mark. His opponent felt again. He played on quickly. Drives it inside forward. 50. Sale's got some numbers. And Lockie Todd goes back with the flight with a courageous mark. Chips down the line now. Doesn't quite get the purchase on as he wanted to. He wanted to get to Pendlebury. It took three or four goes Oof. to get there. Whitehill picked up and no. dumped Illegal tackle. Ryan Sparks in a uh, sling tackle. And will win the free kick for the power. They trail by 11 points. And adrenaline will do that sometimes. Yep. Just force you to tackle a bit more, uh, with a bit more intent than you normally would. They go forward now. Can they find room? They can't. It was Krause that wanted to have a shot for goal, but the numbers of Sale have been pretty good. They've been pretty steady under pressure as the big man, Jack Leslie, clears the area towards half-back flank nicely. Gathered in, though, by Big Hoofer. He was taken it. high, and there'll be a free kick to Hoofer. His longest kick will get them within 40 metres, or maybe 30 metres, and that's what you think he might do from right half forward. Harley no, he goes oh. short. The kick was poor and cut off with ease. Jack, Hutchin, uh, Jack Hutchins takes the mark. Hutchins goes lateral, finds Leslie. 14 minutes into the first quarter. Gee, Sales midfield's working hard defensively as well, so their two-way runs really hurt and want Thaggy at the moment. Magpies lead by 11, kicks towards centre wing area. McGinnis with a big target, dropped the mark, front and square there was Johnson, kicks it straight, straight in the middle of the ground, Allison, good to see him back out there, shoved out of the way there by Blair, got driven into the ground, and McLaren and the Magpies tackling pressure is strong to open up our final series of 2022. What Lockie Todd's doing as well, Scott, is he's pushing Harley up the ground, so getting him away from the danger area inside 50, and the tactic's working so far. And McGinnis tapped this one down, Blair was first there though, that was Jared, head over, good work by Whitehill, gave it to the coach in Johnson, gets it out of the fat side can't quite hit the target in Campbell keeps his feet though, wants the right foot comes back onto it now wow. and puts it through, the medal and there's your Zambrero goal of the day in the first quarter of the 15 minute mark to Tom Campbell how good a sail inside 50 to hold their ground when they're under pressure and know they've only got you know a little bit of space in between them and still be confident enough to kick goals. Their ball movement is so quick and so clean the that there's plenty of room to move inside their forward 50 where Wonthaggy is stopping and propping and giving time for Sale to push back. So that scoreline, Paul Carter, uh, is, a, is a testament to the good work Sale are doing. 17-point lead at the 15-minute mark to Sale on the LV Forkwood scoreboard. Oh, here we go. Another centre break can go Sale's way. Uh, taken off the ball. Playing was the call. I thought Whitehill was taken with it. Doesn't matter. They'll get a second chance. A quick handball giving Grand. Come from Johnston. And off they come. Grand stand side. The race is on. Wonthaggy will lead the race, but they need to get ahead on it and cart the pressure around the ball was too much nicely done uh, on grandstand side it was by sparks goes along the line can't find his teammate he went searching for hutchinson and now hutchinson applies the tackle to his direct opponent in will leslie and there'll be a ball up by the field umpire close to the boundary left half forward flank one thinking kicking to the left of radio and to the town end of morwell and here they go. They gather valuable meterage, and in doing so, they've got themselves a free kick that will go the way of Jack Blair. So the Blair boys have been pretty busy. So Blair, half forward flank. He's too far out to score, but he rolls around on Allison. A little kick, though. He drops at the toes there of Harley. Tap down. Nicely front spot by Kraus. Kicks to a dangerous spot. Dawson was there. Tap forward, though. The Magpies have got some numbers. Allison taps it. Lang tries to crash through. Leaves the footy behind. And through the weight of numbers this time, it was Tiziani who caused the stoppage. And 16 minutes now have gone. That's got a stoppage at half forward for the power. They trail by 17. A big jump there by Thomas now. He's taking his ruck duties in the middle of the ground. Grabbing it was Sparks and Cooper Whitehill grabbed him. Scott, we've been, I've been asked if I can actually get some scores for reserves and seniors for okay. around the grounds for the afternoon, which I will do for Harvey Norman Gippsland Furniture. Of course, we can let you know that uh, in the reserves, it was a big win to Mafra in the end. 
As a handball from Blair squirts out. That was from Jared to Jack. And Jack's little kick goes to the top of the square. Gets out the back. No one knows where the footy is. And then they turn around and pick it up. Dyer was the one who just barreled it out. Good work by Blair to come the other way. Taint was there. McGuinness did well. Handball draw to Allison. The Magpies are away. They got Leslie. They got one in the goal square. Get it to Glenn. Leslie peels and goes. Goes towards Glenn. Want Daggy come back. Glenn brings it to the front. Here's Jackson Glenane. Twisting. Left foot snap at goal. Reed will go back with a flight it will bounce in the goal square and take a left wow. bend and it goes through for a minor score 17 minutes into the first quarter we have scores we have transition football it's a great game as you'd expect and it's 4 one sale it has a three goal lead over one thingy 117 lb forklift scoreboard 18 minute mark first quarter so it was a rare blemish for sale as they go forward their first point Coming back into the Grand Reed, they go short along the boundary. They haven't got much room to move here, Juan Thaggy. They find Flynn Anderson. He's back on the fence. Behind him, the scoreboard that says they're uh, trailing 25-7. to 7, And his kicks poor. Falls in the hands of the big man in Ryan Pendlebury. He kicks to the top of the square. They try to spoil. It bounces. And I tell you what, there's an attempted kick on goal. And it was done by Brad Dessert. He couldn't get a boot to the ball before it just found itself over the goal line. A second point. 4 2 26, now 19 point lead for one uh, for sale over Wanthegi. The uh, e power at 117. So Wanthegi about to reel back in to the field of play. And it was through Blair, uh, Bray, who found Blair. That's uh, Jack Variety. Kicks to the wing area. And reading that nicely was his teammate, Noah Anderson. He's got some numbers forward if he moves it quick, and he does just that. They've got two. Dawson's one of them. He can mark. He's got Krauss on over the top of him. He wants to go, oh, but he God. comes back in board. Oh, oh Davey bobbles it, but takes the mark in the end. They've still got some numbers, but Davey turns his back. Do you like that box? No, no. Both about the same comment. He turned his back. No Maddie's problem turning home. your back. You must kick the goal. Yep. Yeah, we must to. kick the goal. This is his only thing that he can actually bring back from that little slight mishap he's just uh, caused himself. Well, we know he can kick goals, Tom Davey. At the 20-minute mark, a big moment right here now for the Moore Bowling Club as Davey puts it on its way, and he's missed it. He's pushed it to the right. Nah. Oh, it's Is come it? back left. Unbelievable. The wind dragged it to the right. It sucked it back to the left, if you don't mind. Oh, what wind? It's come off the one faggy foreshore, has it? No, I don't know where that wind come from, but uh, it did pan a bit left. It was, did swing left to right to right to left, and um, I'm still getting over the left of radio thing before as well, so we'll talk about that later. All right, yep, but, sure. Uh, what a great goal. You did, you actually, t actually, we challenged the kick coming inside, but Davey was in the right spot at the right time there, and uh, a much-needed goal there to one faggy. 13-point lead to sail at the 20-minute mark of the first quarter. LB Forklift scoreboard sale 4 2 26. One thank you, 2 1 13. Ball comes back to the middle of the ground. <laughs> McGuinness tapped it down. They go forward again to the power. Goes over the head of Pennery. Hutchison gives oh. the handle off to Murray and looking for two goals in 10 20 seconds. And you can tell by the crowd. Wow. Andy Murray's got another one. The margins now back to seven. Just that open spread at the centre at the centre bounce, and uh, they use the ball very well. And they push the ball forward quickly this time, one thaggy, rather than uh, being stop started by Sale. And Murray, we know how dangerous he is. He just turned on a thrippence and uh, ran into an open goal and got his second for the quarter. Can I ask who got the centre break? Because I completely missed. Uh, one thaggy got the centre break. I'd give it to uh, Blair. I think it was. Yeah, it was Blair. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Jack Blair. Margin sits at seven points on the LV Forklift scoreboard. Yeah, and probably the scoreboard complimentary to one thaggy given that Sale have, have had a lot of play, but they haven't been able to put one thaggy away. You wouldn't expect them to, but certainly the margin could be greater than what it currently is. As I reckon that's an even four, but the second go at it uh, goes Sale's way. They can't bust the pack, although they tried pretty hard. The umpire will assume control. But you'd expect it to be this good, the yes, quality of the game. You'd 100%. expect it to be this good. So both sides are making the most of opportunities and they're doing it very well. Nice to watch. Free kick from the ruck will go one thaggy's way, the way of Jacob Thomas. Jacob Thomas plays quickly inside forward 50 down the corridor. They need someone to oh, grab level. Good grab. Or do they? Because the grab was taken by the big man, Jake Hutton, who's played a fair bit of seconds football this year. But he doesn't look out of... Uh, order here, playing defensive. Uh, defensive, uh, Nicely done. He went towards the outer side. I reckon taking ball and all. Was it Jesse Collins? It was. How, who, confident, how confident are the Sale coaches? Because Hutchins, we know, played forward in the few games that we've called Sale. Yep. And, we, and he's played his handful of the reserves games. Now he's playing back in a final. 
This was the fella that you liked uh, a couple of weeks like ago, it wasn't it? Very much. Very exactly. Much so. It looks looks very good. It looks very, very well placed down back. Yeah, yeah left half ball very well. Left half forward flank is where the ball is at the moment. Sale into attack. Sale leading by seven points. Twenty two minutes gone, first quarter. Important game for this one. The, the winner gets to play the unbeaten Lee and Gather next week. The loser will play next week against the winner of tomorrow's game between Tarelgan and Morwell. The game that Gippsland Live will be covering. Same time, same channel, just a different day, obviously, because today's Saturday and tomorrow's Sunday. <laughs> and a different team. <laughs> and a different team. I've got a first score here from the mid-Gippsland Football League semi-final, or second semi-final. Yep. And in the reserves, it's uh, Turo, 10-9-69. They defeated Newborough, 6-3-39. Lang gave a quick handle to McLaren, who got it in towards Jack Leslie. Shrugged one, got around another, tapped it to a teammate in Allison. He goes to ground, head over the football. There was Ronke, couldn't quite gather it. Quick kick out there from Flynn Anderson. Didn't travel the required distance. Umpire said play on. And Ronke attacked the footy and got wrapped up. I tell you what, Jack Blair has been ferocious in his tackles this afternoon. He's mm -hmm. playing a little bit more as that midfielder too, as we sort of seen a couple of games, just as a permanent forward. Not today, Box. Not today. And he's, when they've swung him into the middle, this is where they've really up, actually up their tempo. One thing, he says, led the way. Well, can they get a quick kick out of this one out of defence? And they can. And lands in the hands of Murray. Just read that one nicely. He's on the wing. He drives it towards half forward. Hutchison gets it on his chest, goes to ground, gets up. Has a look. He's 70, 80 metres out from goal. He's got an open forward line. He'll chip it over the top to Dawson. Good spoil from Bowen in the end. Lang was there to help out with Pendery. They give the hands back to Hutchins. And that is of power of uh, sale. Although now, though, Thomas gave it a quick handle to Lindsay. His kick missed the target. Everyone's having fresh air. He's out there at the moment. Lindsay said, I'll just pick it up, gather it. Murray's on his own inside forward 50. If it comes to ground. Coming. Here it is. Murray, Poppy, you called it. Three goals coming. Yes! He's got three in the first quarter. Does Andy Murray. Wow. That is all class. And, I mean, when the confidence is up, we know he's a confidence player. And uh, he's really put, to put on a show inside 50 for one thaggy. And he's playing the lone hand inside too. The other player that I want to talk about is Jack Hutchins. He's probably got the uh, – Hutchinson, I should say. He's probably got the uh, upper hand now on Will Leslie because we haven't caught him much this afternoon at the minute. He's playing that real lead-up game, turning and making sure he gets the ball inside 50 just to put that sale defence under pressure. So, right well under one thaggy so far of what they've done. One point, the difference. Sale for one – uh, 4 2 26 one thank you for 125 Albie Forklift scored 24 minutes played all right the ball falls off the back of Leslie uh, handball quickly by Lang went searching for a teammate couldn't find any room to move so the umpire will take control he placed himself in the perfect position then Andy Murray read the ball nicely in flight as good driver does he could see where the ball was going to come if it was sport correctly and it was and now sale again will want to answer after they've been pretty good now mclaren kicks towards goals probably should have done more with that one but nice body work means a mark goes away of sale and is it ellison who's yeah, got it is ellison, on the ground yeah. plays on quickly the easiest of goals the umpire says no i need to put you towards the boundary you're over your mark well, I didn't see him come back on the ground. He's done a good job to do that. He done a better job to use his body to take the mark right on the line between the goal post and point post. And therefore, he'll be kicking right on the boundary line. But he's on the right side for a right footer, if you know what I mean. And he'll kick around the body as they so often do these days. Don't like it. Uh, I know you don't. <laughs> it's the way to go, Box. It's... Clearly so, the way to go. So Ellison, he's classy enough to get this, and this should be bread and butter these days, but it's always easy to call him from the boundary. Guess what? He's done it easy. He's done it comfortably, and all of a sudden, again, Sale extend that lead. I think every time we've called it, it's a quick play inside 50 for, for Both Sale. Both sides. You know, so yeah. uh, we're going to see a, a plethora of goals this afternoon. Oh. Oh, that's yep. a lot of goals. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Boxer explaining to Poppy Thank what you. a word means. Yeah. Well, oh, he looked at me really dumbfounded, and I thought, well, maybe it's because well, I said I was before. dumbfounded because you came out correctly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great goal to say. Let's move on for that. Seven point lead, 26 minute mark of the first quarter on the LV Forklift scoreboard. We have Sale on 5 2 32, leading one thaggy 4 1 25. So we've got another score here. This is in the North Gippsland Football League Reserve game, and your Law North in the reserves go to the grand final 14 9 93. 
three. They defeated TTU 11-2-68. Nine goals kicked here in the first quarter of the Gippsland League and back to the middle they go. Hootha tapped that one backwards. Lindsay works hard, got one over the shoulder from McLaren. And right in the middle of the ground does Aidan Lindsay. Just takes a little time to pull up his shorts. 27 minutes gone into this uh, first quarter. It's been a belter. Margins are only seven points in favour of the Magpies. Lindsay gets called to play on now. He goes to the far side. Sparks will be the target. Johnson will elevate and spoil. Here's Murray again. Coughs out the back, though. The Magpies have got numbers. It was a Glenane back to Tainch. And now the kick from Johnson goes back. 25 metres and lands in the hands of Jake Hutchins, who squares it up now in the side to Leslie. His kick out wide. Tried to find Lang, didn't do so in the end. Coming oh, back geez. in board was Bates. And he just got pulverised by a Freeman tackle. Holding the footy, the umpire said. So Freeman now kicks to around about centre half forward through. Uh, the target is Leslie. Leslie got hands to it, got the free Ooh. kick or the mark. I think they paid the mark. Yeah, he has. Yeah. He's got one the mark, got uh, clear air, and guess what? He found Thomas Campbell. This is all too easy. Yep. Late in this first quarter, the margin is seven points, but it could be 13 points if Campbell can bring up his second of the afternoon in this first quarter. Looks lively down forward, Campbell, doesn't he? So Siren gone, 1325. Sale 5232. The opportunity for the sale side to go to the quarter time huddle full of confidence. A spring in their step. Campbell will kick from 35 at a 45 degree angle. Off the boot, looks good, yeah. and he's oh. hit the right upright. A point finishes off the quarter. For sale. Yeah, LV Forklift, first quarter action, higher equipment solutions, 33 Stratton Drive in Tarelgan sees the Magpies in front by, as we said, 8 points, 5 3, 33 the Magpies, one thingy, a 4 1 25. You're listening to Gippsland Live right here on TRFM, first quarter action, all done and dusted. It's a qualifying final for the Morwell Rec Reserve, and we do it for Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. In 2022, TRFM is dedicated to providing Gippsland and the Valley with quality local news. Aged care services in Gippsland will be boosted with four programs to be implemented in response to the Aged Care Royal Commission. With older people in Gippsland finding it difficult to navigate the complex aged care system, the programs will include care finder and early intervention programs. Part of Gippsland and the Valley's way of life. TRFM, on the air and on iHeartRadio and Radio app. Quarter Pounder, a true classic. Juicy Aussie beef and <gasps> bacon. Macca's Quarter Pounder with bacon. Maybe the sequel is even better than the original. Available after 10.30 a.m. for a limited time. Style has a new home in Gippsland and it's Carpet Country. Carpet Country is proud to announce the launch of The Country Tiler. Building on decades of experience sourcing tiles from all over the world, they've condensed all of their knowledge into one stunning new contemporary showroom. With stunning tiles hand-sourced from only the finest suppliers, they have something for everyone and with special orders and almost limitless buying power. Soon to be Gippsland's exclusive home of Laminex, the only limitation is your imagination. Drop in to see them at Argyle Street, Tarelgan. Harvey Norman, your destination for outdoor living. New season range in store now. The latest trends in timber, aluminium, rope and wicker. Outdoor lounges, dining, bar settings and more. With selected stock available for immediate delivery. Get 60 months interest free, no deposit, no interest from Latitude with 60 approximately equal monthly payments and receive a bonus gift card up to $1,000. Finance only available if you have or are approved for a participating Latitude credit card. Minimum finance amount $1,000. CTs and Cs. Interest applies for non-compliance. Fees and product exclusions apply. Get ready for outdoor living at Harvey Norman. Hi, Stewie from Bensdale Mazda and Hyundai here. With spring just around the corner, now is a great time to get you and your family into a brand new SUV and hit the road for some sun fueled adventure. We have a great selection of mid size SUVs available and ready to drive away, with loads of safety and comfort features across the board. We're even open Saturday. So come on in and say hello to myself and the friendly team at Bensdale Mazda and Hyundai. 554 Princess Highway, Bensdale, LMCT 12165. Hear that? That's the beautiful sound of the Morwell Bowling Club Bistro. The perfect atmosphere for a post-win feed or a sorrow-draining loss. Especially because Saturday is pot and parma night. Choose from the selection of yummy parma toppings. Only $20 every Saturday from 5.30pm. Includes a pot of beer, soft drink or a glass of wine. To make a booking, phone the club on 5134 3449. 52 Hazelwood Road Morwell. 
Visit the website morewellbowls.com.au for other specials during the week. Top Pub Morewell. 18 bucks. Plot and Palmer in the sports bar Monday to Friday. Free trivia every Wednesday from 7.30pm. $15 lunch in the bistro Monday to Wednesday. The new winter bistro menu now available at Top Pub. I wish my laundry had a feature tile. I need to go to Weir's. I'd love a classy new splashback for the kitchen. I need to go to Weir's. Some porcelain tiles would really finish my bathroom. Weir's. I need to go to Weir's now. Weir's Flooring Centre. York Street Sale. The Triple T Deluxe Burrito and Quesadilla are back this winter at Sambrero. Twice the cheese loaded with rich Trofello sauce. Toasted and oh so warm. For a limited time, only at Zambrero. It's feel good mix. Now, a look at the quarter highlights. Gippsland Live on TRFM. Now sail through White, he'll take the ball. Beautifully done by Lang. Handball gets the one two. Could be an absolute beauty. Guess what? It is an absolute beauty. Goal number two. And goal number two for sale. It's a Zambrero contender for the goal of the day. <laughs> Let's have a look at Andy Murray. Must need this goal. They trail by 17 points to the power. Puts it on its way. He likes it off the boot. Does it come back and up? Yes, it does. And that's the one the power need. Can't quite hit the target in Campbell. Keeps his feet, though. Wants the right foot. Comes back onto it now. Wow. And punts it through. The medal. And there's your Zambrero goal of the day. Davey puts it on its way. And he's missed it. He's pushed it to the right. Nah, oh, it's come it? back left. The wind dragged it to the right and sucked it back to the left, if you don't mind. <laughs> Lindsay said, I'll just pick it up, gather it. Murray's on his own inside forward 50. Three when it comes to ground, coming. here it is. Murray, Poppy, you called it. Three goals coming, yes! He's got three in the first quarter, does Andy Murray? Gippsland Live on TRFM. Well, we had plenty of highlights in the first quarter. We had nine goals to cheer home and some absolute crackers for Zambrero this afternoon. And Thomas Campbell was a great one. Shannon Lang was great. A couple of early contenders. And Aaron Murray for the power has three first quarter goals. Here's Paul Carter. Key stats. All thanks to Gippsland. Isuzu Ute. Some of the stats are quite even here. Uh, inside 50s, 13-12 on Thaggy's way. Uh, I'll go straight to the Ruckman. Jack Leslie, Dane to Guinness. Between the 22 hit-outs, 12 to Leslie, 10 to McGuinness. Up against 7 to Wontaggy, 5 to Hooser, 2 to Thomas. Yet the clearances have gone Wontaggy's way, 12-9. Mm. Wow. Centre clearance is also Wontaggy, 7-3. And we had a couple there that resulted in goals within a minute there as well. Free kicks, Wontaggy, 7-4. to four. Uh, Others I'll, I'll cover at half-time. Main stat winners uh, for Wontaggy. Uh, six disposals to Aidan Lindsay, uh, five to Jack Blair, four to, uh, to Jared Blair for sale, Shannon Lang, ten disposals, seven to Jack Johnston, uh, six to Cooper Whitehill and to Jack Jackson Glenane. Poppy, what did you make of that first uh, quarter? Well, firstly, the stats actually... Uh, surprise me, yeah. given that the Ford 50 entries are relatively even. Uh, so eight scoring shots to one thaggy five, I think, is a reasonable reflection of the control that Sale had. Also, the centre clearances surprised me, given that the big fella Leslie, Jack Leslie's had so much first touch of the ball, and it seems as though his uh, on-ballers were in control also, but... A lot of the attack from one thing is coming from their back half and they're making the most of rare opportunities. Look, overall, we knew we were going to get a game. We've got a game and a half. Yeah. And this is going to be a great second quarter of footy. There's no doubt about that. It will, and the great second quarter all brought to you by the Top Pub and Flanagan's Irish Bar, if you don't mind. A new sponsor on board during the week. And it's great to have Marty Lucino and the team on board. The bar's open daily from 12 and, of course, seven days a week, lunch and dinner. And the second quarter is about to get underway. Here's Poppy. All right. Who forgets the tap or does it? I'll uh, tell you what, I reckon it was Leslie that got the second opportunity. He finds that man again. Lang's kick was smothered off the boot, but still gained 10 metres to threaten the forward 50 of sale as they go towards their attacking end, which is the town end in the second quarter. And if you've just tuned, to sale, uh, tuned in, sale 5-3-33. One thing here, 4 one the opening seconds of this second quarter. Yeah, Lindsay from this stoppage gets a handle out wide. Sparks goes one way, then the other. Gives it to Murray. This guy's been on fire for Gippsland. Ozuza Ute, his little kick goes towards Davey. Puts him under a little bit of pressure, but the strong body, he was able to grab it, absorb the pressure from Glenane. Another ball up on the wing. Around the grounds for Harvey Norman. Furniture is Boxer. Oh, I've got the Mid Gippsland quarter time scores, and it's Newborough 2 2 14. They lead Tarwin just the one point. 
at the moment. Hootha won the clearance, kicked it towards half forward. Here's Harley. Nice. First time we've seen Troy. He goes into the open pocket and elevating. Can't quite mark it. Back there was Thomas. Gets over the back. Running onto this one is oh. Anderson. Slips down, flicks it back. Holding the man. Free kick to Anderson. And he did well as it's Noah Anderson. He's in the tight pocket right near in front of the scoreboard. Does he drop punt? Does he do a uh, banana? Or does he run and kick around the body on his left side? Is this a stupid Chanana kick, maybe? No, no, you know Chanana. Not on this, on this one. one, no. This no. is the uh, the true banana. He looks like he's lining up, though, no, he's banana. for the banana. banana. Yep. And he comes in inside the first two minutes. The oh. banana! Oh, did it clip the post? <laughs> banana, no. There you go. Have a look at that. I, I think it clipped the post. No, it didn't. No, I think it did. Goal. Shut up. That's a goal. Oh. Oh, Poppy. It hit the it post. It the post. Oh, you wrecked the Just party. at the top. Sorry, you boys. The party. You wrecked the party. Poppy, that's your fault. Looks like you got a <laughs> banana on your face there, buddy. <laughs> poor, poor old poor sheep. You'd already marked it down. <laughs> it just clipped it on the line. Is it just He's through? not happy. Poor Garner's Garner spotted he's, by liquid paper. He's thrown the wide out. The margin now, now back to a seven points, Pop. They've gone straight down the ground, have uh, Pendlebury and Sale from defence. But guess what? A quick kick forward has found the big man. He dropped it. Can you believe it? Thomas dropped what he should have taken. And now a ground level. Blair's finding out. Good Handballs to the advantage of a teammate, and that is Jack Blair. I thought he was taken low. The umpire says he was taken high. <laughs> Guess what? He was taken. And he was taken illegally. And I tell you what, that goal that you put down a moment ago that was a mistake. <laughs> put, put, put this back. down. Put this down. Double down, Paul Carter. <laughs> Double down. Rob Thaggy, 4 2, Sale 5 3. They can be within a point. Yeah, if little Jack Blair can get his first of the afternoon, he'll kick from 20 metres out on a 45 degree angle. And a player of this ability should get these pretty comfortably. Oh my, oh. Goodness. oh, my goodness. You it's can the, tell. It's the poppy curse. I'd like Every to apologise to the listeners this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Poppy. You can't miss those in big games. That's it. And the score is now 4 3 27, wow. one goal between the difference uh, between the teams. 5 3 33 sale, and that's a carpet country score worth three minutes. He just changed his angle of his body, yes. didn't he, when he kicked yep. it? You could just see from here, he, went to, he swung to the right and oh. went the same way the body followed. So bring it back in now for the Magpies. Is Mitch Bound, and he goes straight down the middle of the ground. Lang was there, wrapped up straight away. I tell you what, the two Blair boys have been great for Gippsland Ozuzu Ute Boxer. They have been. Then as soon as they swung Jack into the middle, uh, he gave them that spark they needed in that first quarter. Again, stoppage in the middle of the ground, forward to centre for the power. Good work by Hooth, a little uh, sidestep. Big man puts it inside forward 50. Penderbury read it nicely, though. Barrels it out to the wing. Glenn Ames there. Picks it up at his toes. Looking for the handball to taint. She gives it to him now. Knowles will come and put on a little bit of pressure. Goes back to bound. He kicks down the line. In the front spot there was Ronke. Couldn't mark it. Flynn Anderson claimed it and said no. Ronke had touched it, the umpire said. Well... No mark will be paid. We'll ball it up. Half forward flank now. Far side of the ground. I know it's only early moment, second quarter, but one thing, he looks as though they've settled a little. They've just settled a little. Yeah, they have. Head over the football was Lang. Squeezed it out to Jack Leslie. Somehow got the handball onto a teammate in Taint. Kicks it high inside forward 50. No one can mark it. The run from half back was good. And it's a nice little neat kick. And that will come from Bates. I think and he finds wrong Murray. Matchup. Wrong matchup there. And Murray now kicks it out in front of Blair. That's Jared. With the bright yellow boots right in front of the commentary box here at Moorwell Rec Reserve. And Jared Blair looks to go over the top towards Lindsay Direction. Johnson will close. Can't good. get the hand on it. And Lindsay takes a strong mark, 55 metres out, too far out to score. Thomas goes to the pocket in that direction on Penderbury. And Thomas this time takes a double grab, but still it was enough. I'll tell you what, it looks as though it's a set play, Nick. The first lead is ignored and it opens up the space behind for the second lead. Yeah, they looped out, they U-turned out and made sure that Thomas had the space to run into. It was an interesting matchup seeing Pendlebury on Thomas. I could see why I think Pendlebury thinks he might have it for a little bit of pace, but this is where he might hurt him a little bit on the lead. Tough shot from here, hard up on the boundary line. 45 metre kick, scoreboard end. Comes in, right foot Ooh. kick, puts it on its way and oh. hits the upright. Wow. Come back nicely, hit the goalpost. Times. Is there a magnet in the ball? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's going on there? Five and a half minutes in, second quarter. Five point lead to Sale 5333 to Wontaggy 4428. Top pub mobile scoreboard. All right, the ball brought back into play. They go down the corridor. Nicely done, too. On the end of it was Bowen. Oh, uh, look out. Tell you what, they've run into trouble. Taken high, eased the pressure fortuitously for Will Leslie that ran into trouble. 
And they'll get a second go at this. So inside defensive 50, they don't gain ground, but Mitch Bowen is the option on the outer side of the ground. And they come back into the corridor. So they're working their way down the corridor more times than not, so It's obviously a set play. And there they go again. Can they find room? They can't. Oh. No, cut off again. Not sure that's the right option because one Thaggy are reading it nicely at the moment. They come grandstand side. Good work by Jacob Thomas. He kicks long. He's got an option up forward. That option is Troy Harley. And Troy Harley goes bang and clunks it with a big strong mark right in front of goals and the opportunity to hit the lead. Possibly, I think, Paul Carter for the first time this afternoon. Correct. Oh, I think it'd be ruined if it was Jack Johnson. He had the opportunity there to really if you got it's a make or break uh, opportunity to either crunch him in and make him earn the mark and uh, he just turned away looking to where the ball was and gave Harley a bit more time to settle a mark. All right, Troy Harley. Wants to do what his teammates haven't been able to do, and that's find the big sticks. Guess what? He's found the big sticks. Good work, Troy Harley. Good work, Wonthaggy. The pressure back on sale. Just that half-back line of Wonthaggy now, just starting to find their rhythm uh, and punch that ball forward. And just a couple of little mistakes there from Sale. I think there's nothing to panic about because we expect a shootout. So it's going to happen where both sides are going to kick goals. They're both class sides. So it's one of those opportunities now that uh, one side's got to find the ascendancy. Yeah, I'm really taking control of the game. As Poppy uh, accurately predicted, uh, the lead has changed for the first time in the match. Oh, Poppy. At the seven-minute mark of the second quarter, where Wonthaggy on the Flanagan scoreboard, a 5-4-34, leading sale, 5-3-33. Fifteen dollar lunch specials at both venues throughout the week, and then a go again to the power. This time it's Jack Blair. Goes to half forward. Harley's on a long searching lead. Goes oh. to ground over. High tackle and contact. High contact, I should say, on Jared Blair. Half forward flank, they look up. Jack Hutchison presents. He's got Will Leslie for company. Sala got some numbers. He's got some short options right here. He does, and he goes in that direction to his brother in Jack. He can get it to Harley again. Decides not to. Todd closes. And Jack Hutchison looks up. He wants someone to come at him. Murray presents, so does Dawson, but he goes in the Harley direction in the end. He protect the drop zone and just couldn't get his jukes to it. And Allison. And Harley will see it go over for a boundary throw-in. It took seven minutes to get the first goal in the second quarter. We already had three goals in the first quarter by the time this time uh, ticked over. We've got a boundary throw-in. So Big Hoother tries to get in front of the pack, but uh, the big man, Leslie, got his left paw on it. But now there's a couple of paws on the big man, and they hold him in. I'm not sure that's the right option by Blair. Had the option to bring the ball within 10 metres, went to the boundary line 30 metres out, and now they're in a spot of botherers. I reckon it could be... McLaren who kicks the ball uh, towards the grandstand wing. One thing, you've got the numbers, but have they got the uh, peace of mind or the, the uh, presence of mind to find a teammate? They haven't. Geez, there's some good body work around the ball by players of both sides. And Blair, as he so often is, is the last man to get up with the ball in his hand. It was a nice tackle laid on Blair by Jared Freeman. Ball to be thrown up. Yeah, Leslie and Huth to do the ruck duties. I'll give it to Leslie. He tapped it back. Lindsay good at the stoppage. McLaren was equally up to the task. Just oh. pinched it off him and then ran away from Lenahan. Wobbles one inside forward 50. Oh, standing his ground nicely was Flynn Anderson back there for the power to save the uh, Magpies forwards as they come out strong. He's kick out wide. Oh, goes out towards Bray who dropped the mark that he should have taken. Comes back to ground level. Working hard. Ronke, uh, Cooper Whitehill was there for him. And a free kick, there'll be a throw. As Whitehill did all the good work on the big fella. And then just threw the footy. Same as McLaren, he did all the great work. And then his kick was shies and he hasn't gone inside 50. So Bray has it, chips over the top. And he finds a teammate on the far side. Ball comes to ground. McLaren's there to swoop it up. On the wing, comes back inboard the handball to Whitehill. Inboard now again by hands to Allison. His kick nicely nice. done. Finds Col Collins. Outside 50, looks up. Where are the key forwards? McGuinness will present, got a little bit of space. Ignored. Freeman now goes to the other side. They go back to Campbell in the end. Lenahan will spoil, end up receiving his own ball. He gave it to Scott, who just dumped the kick out of the back half and is going to come back in because Bown has it now for the Magpies. So Bown in the centre of the Morwell Rec Reserve. His side trailing by the one point. Ten and a half minutes gone, second quarter. 5-4 to 5-3. They go inside Ford 50. Haven't been able to find a winner in the first ten minutes of this second oh. quarter. Is this their big chance? It's the big man. It's Brad Desson who kicks for a goal across the face by a long, long way out of play on the full. 
They just seem a little bit rushed going inside 50, don't they? They're just not using the ball well enough, so uh, when they get it inside, do they? I think the midfielders are hesitating. Yeah, There's no are. separation. Uh, the sail forwards are really just one lead. There's no blocks. There's no protecting. There's no double back leads, I think, at the moment. Uh, their defenders from one thing, he, uh, got the upper hand. Blair does well. Got a handball out to Hayes, who tried to take him on and then got caught on the footy. The advantage was paid, and Bound didn't really have an advantage. And the one thing he supporters are happy with their defence there. He was spot on too, Scott. I was watching the leads coming inside. Odessa looks a little bit slow off the mark. Wouldn't you bring the ball inside 50 to the top of the square where he's going to be one-on-one -on -one and you think you give him more of a chance? You know, one thing he forwards are leading knowing they're not going to get the ball but opening up for players yeah. behind them. Brad, uh, uh, whereas Sala leading, wanting the ball. What I want to say is you get the ball inside 50 to your two bigs. You've got yep. two bigs in there because they've got a class inside 50 small sale. Get the ball to ground level. All right, ground level is where it is now. Lang's taken with uh, away with it. Nicely done. McLaren finds Allison. A nice little look away handball. Finds out his mate in Tanks who goes in for it. Tell you what, one thank you. You've been good, but oh. on that occasion he was taken high. The Ford for sale and that is Kyle Reed. Gave away the free kick he did, Reed. Yeah, so here we go. Reed gave away the free kick. It goes in the arms of McGuinness. Now, it's going to take one of his very best kicks. He'll kick from right on 50, maybe 49 metres. Distance will be the big test. But in these sort of conditions, no excuses. In fact, he's going to go within oh. 48. He's getting oh. awfully close to the man on the mark. Distance isn't the problem, but guess what? Accuracy is a huge hurdle for him. And he was lucky to find the boundary. It was punched over the boundary line and never looked like threatening the goals. It's 10 metres away from the goals. Yeah, just looking for distance, and uh, he absolutely sprayed it on the left goalpost. One thing, he lead by a point in this second quarter for the top pub, Morwell. Ball comes back into the field of play. Reed clearly taps it down. Allison picked it off, kicks the left foot around the body, going backwards, Lenahan. That ball was touched, so the umpire called him to play on, and then he just kicked it. He had a little bit more time than he expected. It was touched, so we're lucky. We'll have a boundary throw in right in front of the Morwell social rooms and the Legends Bar here at Morwell. Top of the 50, that is. Kicking towards the city into the ground of the Magpies. They trail by a point. They've managed to stay strong, haven't they? But that back six at the moment, they've kept them out for about five minutes, but for how much longer? That's going to be the question. Inside their Ford 50, fighting hard to keep the ball in and keeping the ball in. Players from either side, and I'll pick their numbers up as they get up, but I tell you what, it's uh, it's been hard work all round. One of the players was Sparks. Right now, it was nicely done. McGuinness gets the tap. Oh, Murray. Murray, a <laughs> quick kick forward. I deliberate. tell you what, probably should be deliberate. The umpire, he disguised it as best he could, but it was obvious what his intent was. It was to find the boundary. He's the three-goal kicker. Did another good job there to not pay the price. Left half forward flanks and Sale continue their attack. Leslie just grabs this one out of the rock, puts it in. They've got one in. Kaya Campbell and a big spoil yep. over the back from Scott, closing again. They're under pressure. Every time the forward leads, the defence of one thaggy is strong. And they've zoned towards the boundary. They haven't had the spread the zone either. They're actually looking for that kick out the line here, up the line at the moment. Get something from the stoppage. Reed taps it straight down, though. McLaren was there. Bobbles around. Sparks does well in heavy traffic to kick around his body, but Leslie was able to take a two, three, four, five bites. He's been good, Leslie. He has. He looks up. It's a crowded forward line, and he puts it at the top of the square. It's about five on five. Oh. And, oh, Johnson flew in the front of the pack. Couldn't complete the mark. Ball at ground level again. They're going to make hard work of this if they're going to get a goal out of it, the Magpies, because there's 15 around it. Well, Seems like panic that, footy, doesn't it? That's now seven inside 50s for sale, and they are yet to score, so that defence is rock solid. Mark's it, inside yep. 50 as well, Paul. Uh, How no. many times does it happen that they Free attack kick. and attack and attack before they finally break? Free kick will go to Jack Johnson of the Magpies, so this might be the break. The Magpies called too high there, Scud. So a futurist... Uh oh a lucky. <laughs> just stay oh, with Lucky. Just, just stick with Lucky. <laughs> uh, Mark's inside 54, the Magpies. None this quarter. And how many inside 50s did you say? Seven. Uh, Seven yeah, insides yeah. and no marks. Oh. So Jack Johnson, a chance now to get the Magpies back in front. Right footer. Oh, oh he's sprayed goodness. it. He was 15 oh, metres out, the coach. And he's missed it. He just poked at that too. Yeah, you know what happened when you poke at things? Yep. And he... Oh. And his counterpart could let him know about his kick as well, too. So, um, Jared Blair, let him know on the way through. Well, it's Very nice. Uh... Well, nice little rivalry building between oh. these two sides, as there should be two quality sides. 
Play to bring the ball back in is Tim Knowles from Wonthaggy. Looks left, looks right, goes short. The short option is his teammate in Mitch Hayes. Last line of defence. He plays on, nicely done. He gives it back to the player from which he... Grabbed that kick, and I tell you, waiting when he should have attacked the ball was Sparks. He needed to take one step forward. They've been pretty good, one thingy. They need to be better to get the ball out of that defensive 50. Good tackle, good pressure. It's desperate stuff. And again, the boundary line wins out. 20 metres from Sale's goal. Scores locked away at 5-4 apiece. 16 minutes gone, second quarter. A big one, the first final of 2022. And I tell you what, not much separates these sides at the moment. In fact, nothing does. As McLaren was taken without the ball, the free kick wasn't paid. And the umpire will ball this one up. Dangerous spot now for the power defence. They've held strong so far. As Poppy said earlier, does something break? Comes to ground level. Quick handball out from... Uh, Lane gave it to Taint, who kicked around his body and Desson with a big fly, can't complete the mark. Handball out comes there from Bates, he has to go and get his own handball, then he's got a forward one, Murray's high up the ground, he's kicked three, he's at half back though at the moment, he's lost the footy in a tackle, and the Magpies, pressure builds again, this time through Allison, gets it in, it's a little bit more open, and Jack Leslie stands strong, the tall don't get any shorter on a day like today. And that's what you want from the experienced campaigner from Sale. He has been phenomenal. Best the man on ground by a long way. As well. Even, and it's just his contested work here too, but his chase down of a big bloke, chasing down players as well. He's just, uh, he's the full package right now this afternoon. Well, for Gippsland, Izuzu Ute, we've called him the best player on the ground, Jack Leslie. He'll kick it. He must put it through. Only uh, 10 metres out, and he puts it through the middle. He puts a hand in the air, and he celebrates with his teammates as the Magpies go six points in front. We've just had another player poke at the ball then, too. The ball yep. didn't go any higher than about 10 or 15 metres, and uh, I don't know whether that's nerves and just making sure that they get the goal and they get the score because they've had all the play the last five minutes inside their 50. They've been rewarded now. Has uh, a breeze picked up, Bob? Uh, wait, there's a lot of... Like there's like a... Boy, there's a whirlwind in here. <laughs> What's going on? And the Flanagan scoreboard at the 18-minute mark of the second quarter. Doors it's a six-point lead to Sale, 6-4-40 to one thank you, 5 4 34. And, uh, Boxer, they have had the late last eight inside 50, Sale. So. Well, amazing. Here we go. They're going to try to make it uh, the last nine because they go forward again. Glenane, that's who they went searching for. Blair's going to apply the pressure from half-back, kicks towards right, half-forward. And it's that man again, Murray, who's beaten with the ball on this occasion and then held his tackle for a bit too long. I thought on Jack Hutchins, or in fact, Jake Hutchins. The umpire says, no, we'll ball that one back up. Nine goals scored in the first quarter. We've played 18 minutes of this second. We've only seen two. Doesn't mean the footy's been any less. It's been bloody good, and it's going to continue to uh, be really good, I, I reckon, too, as they go forward through Tiziani, inside forward 50. A punch and now an attempt to mark. The umpire says, play on! Take on the player! Don't wait for the umpire! <laughs> nah, Goodness that, that, gracious, the attempt by Lachlan Todd to take the mark, and everyone waited for the umpire to blow the whistle. Oh, goodness. McLaren grabs the ball. Can he bust the pack? He can't. Well, I'll tell you what, he's been called for. That was umpired by committee. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Uh, well, McLaren was taken with the ball. The free kick will go the way of Jack Blair. See how they stop and they prop and they yep. wait for the best option, whereas Sala blazing away. Oh, nearly taking the good mark was Harley. Oh. In fact, the umpire says he chopped his arms and Harley will get the free kick. There's the difference of going inside Ford 50 between these two sides. And he moved it quick. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, 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 the ideal opportunity. One thing you've worked out, clog the area, make it real hard for him. Uh, one thing you've said, we'll do it the other way around. Let's get the ball inside to our guns uh, when they lead hard forward. So, well, Troy Harley, he's kicked one. He's kicked the side's only goal this quarter. They've had rare opportunities, but could they bring up their second? Harley, distance won't be a problem. Off the boot, looks pretty good. The umpire says, Troy, you've got two. That's a uh, good finish there by Harley, too. We know it's a beautiful kick of the ball, and uh, uh, yeah, it's just that quick play. It's going to be frustrating for the Sale side to know that they've had all the play this yep. quarter, 20 minutes in, and for them, then when one faggy, I don't know how many inside 50s they've had this quarter, but Paul will be able to tell us in a minute, and they scored. So They, they actually had six of the first seven, So, it was, and, and then Sale had the next eight. So that is now uh, seven to nine for the quarter, uh, one faggy to, this, to Sale. And the scores are level once again at the 20-minute mark. Both teams on 6-4-40, and that's on the top pub mall scoreboard. 
Well, the ball comes back to the middle of the ground and McGuinness will do it against Hootha. McGuinness gets the tap. Lang tries to run in the opposite direction that he needs to go. He gave a quick handle off to Johnson, who dropped the footy. That is holding the ball. Well, Sparks has it in the middle of the ground. It's an open forward line. They present. Look at that. Jack Blair's in a long searching lead. Did he get a shove? No. He said, get up, the umpire. They look up. It's going to go Harley direction again. And it gets to the back. No, Harley won yes. two grabs. I'll tell you what, Troy Harley, the difference maker. The key forwards are the key today for me. And Harley's got another shot on goal. 22 minute mark, second quarter for the top pub, Morwell and Flanagan's Irish bar in Terrelgan. I just hope that Sale don't panic. But if he kicks this goal here, Sale don't panic from a coach's perspective. Keep, keep your uh, confidence in Lockie here at the moment because their midfield has to stand up at the moment. Well, the late out was Mitch Thacker. He would have played on this man, Troy Harley, from 45 metres. Right foot put it on its way. And the Wonthaggy supporters like it. And Harley now has three goals to his name. I and just, the margin now is back in their favourite six points. I, I just love the strut after the goal from Harley. It wasn't really a strut. It was like, hey, I'm on. Yeah, and he is. G give me the ball because I'll tell you right now, he's kicked three this quarter. And uh, we've seen him do this before when he went at Mafra. Took the game by the scruff of the neck. And uh, he's capable right now of doing it again. And as Daryl said, it's a six-point lead now. And it's a third lead change this quarter on the uh, Flanagan score. It's 7446 Wontaggy, 6440 sale. All right, ball thrown back up in the centre of the ground to start proceedings, and a good tackle has been laid by Cooper Whitehill. That keeps the ball inside that centre square. The tackle was on Sparks. This time, Guinness gets a tap down. Quick kick off the ground. Play on's the call. Nicely done by Tiziani. Didn't panic. Kick 50. Threatens a forward 50. Good contest. Blair, that's Jack, fights hard to keep the ball in the area. Does it nicely. Quick handball from Dawson. Can he find a teammate? He can't. Shannon Lang gets a red touch in this second quarter. One of the major players. Makers in the first 30 minutes. A free kick down the field. Will go sales well. They've entered the forward 50. Oh. The quickest they've done all day and falling behind the ball. I reckon it's Freeman. Jared Freeman's taken the mark back of the pack, read it beautifully. He kicked one in the first quarter and this one could bring them level again. It just carried um, what a game. Aaron's head. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. And Freeman was in front. You know, he played the percentages and the uh, the ball, luckily, yep. fell into his arms. It did too. Fortuitously is the That's word the you're looking for. Well I'm done, Jared Freeman. 35 metres out directly in front. The little skip to the left. Now he straightens up off the boot. How's it look? No, wow. Well, it's gone right, I reckon. And it's gone well right. So they've had plenty of opportunities, I've got to tell you. They've had plenty of opportunities. I reckon that's the third this quarter from a kick uh, that they should have converted that they haven't. At 6 5 41 so at 7 4 46 one thing. Braving brings it in, gets over the back now. Jack Hutchison nice. does well. Very over the shoulder handball to Blair. This is Jared. Kicks down the line. Look He's got this. Dawson. They've got numbers everywhere. Dawson's going to move it quickly. He scores for 50. Just move the football. Dawson kicks to his open space. Murray presents. And now Todd comes back, gathers the football, and will hold things up. We've got a stoppage. And you've sometimes just got to play the game. You don't have to worry about the umpires. I think he just spent more time listening to the people around him rather than looking up yeah. and looking for his teammate that was inside 50 on his own. So 25-minute mark of this second quarter. Jack Leslie just thumps it. Doesn't gain the meterage that he was after. His taint was wrapped up from Jack Blair. I've got an interesting score. Just want to get the uh, the time of the score that is coming through from Yulonulor North and TTU, Boxer. But one thing you go forward through Murray, who gave it to Sparks, shoved the tackle out of the way, and that was Whitehill, and then pushes it across the face of goal for a minor score. And on your top pub, Morwell scoreboard, the bar's open daily from 12 p.m. and dinner's seven days a week. One goal of difference again, one thaggy, 7 5 47. So 6 5 41, 25 minute mark, second quarter. And a ball big ball for fly. Yeah, nicely done. Good, big, strong mark by Jack Johnson. Plays on quickly right on the siren. It is so we're going to venture forward. They'll go in trailing marginally, as you heard from Paul Carter there. Right on half time, one thaggy, 7 5 47. Sale, 6 5 41. You are listening to Gippsland Live. It's halftime. We've got the halftime wrap coming up after the break. As this is all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Don't forget to cook up a storm with great deals on all the big brands, small appliances, only at your local Harvey Norman Gippsland store. The Morning Crew with Gabby and Dan. Oh, God, Gabby brushed up against the spider on her light switch. What kind of breed were we dealing with here? It was massive. Huntsman. It was Daddy Longlegs. 
A daddy, a daddy long legs. Da- Nobody was massive. It was like this big. Oh. It was huge. <laughs> Sorry, I know we're in audio format, but Gabby's just put her hands up. It was huge, like she was marked in a footy. I yeah. don't think it was the size of a Sharon. Yeah, if it pancakes. <laughs> the morning crew with Gabby and Dan. Weekday mornings from six. TRFM. KBI Off Road is the team you should trust for your vehicle's next repair, fitting, or service. For a huge range of off roading equipment to prepare you for your next adventure, visit KBI Off Road at 319 Princess Highway, Tarelgan. Australian made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Mattresses and ensembles from the leading Australian brands. Lounge furniture and dining room furniture built for the family life with a great selection of options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Create your own bedroom furniture. Customise your bed height, fabric or timber stain. Let our experienced team help you design furniture to suit your home. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian made manufacturing. Australian made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Hear that? That's the beautiful sound of the Morwell Bowling Club Bistro. The perfect atmosphere for a post-win feed or a sorrow-draining loss. Especially because Saturday is pot and palmer night. Choose from the selection of yummy palmer toppings. Only $20 every Saturday from 5.30pm. Includes a pot of beer, soft drink or a glass of wine. To make a booking, phone the club on 5134-3449. 52 Hazelwood Road, Morwell. Visit the website morewellbowls.com.au for other specials during the week. Your children's eyes need the best possible care. Local optometrist Tola Touch at Eye Care Plus offers quality care and great value right here in East Gippsland. If your child has eyesight problems, it can adversely affect their learning potential. A comprehensive eye test can discover a problem well before it becomes a bigger issue. No child is too young to get their first eye test. Book an eye appointment with Tola Touch at Eye Care Plus, Service Street, Bansdale. Locals, caring for locals. Flanagan's Terelgan, $18 Pot and Palmer, Monday to Friday. Cocktail happy hour every Saturday from 7pm and a new winter bistro menu now available. Catch all the live sport and every UFC fight on the big screen at Flanagan's. The Triple T Deluxe Burrito and Quesadilla are back this winter at Sambrero. Twice the cheese, loaded with rich Trofello sauce, toasted and oh so warm. For a limited time, only at Sambrero. It's feel good mix. <laughs> Oh, I'm still feeling the cold, so I'm heading into Doggy Stuff. They have the biggest range of dog coats in Gippsland, and they're on sale right now. Doggy Stuff has double polar fleece for extra warmth. I'd like a waterproof one for when I'm outside, and a hoodie when I'm out and about. So many coats to choose from. So get to the Doggy Stuff coat sale quick, while stock lasts. So what are you waiting for? Spoil your dog and grab a bargain at Doggy Stuff. MacArthur Street Sale, or go to doggystuff.com.au and follow on Facebook. Australian Made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Mattresses and ensembles from the leading Australian brands. Lounge furniture and dining room furniture built for the family life with a great selection of options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Create your own bedroom furniture. Customise your bed height, fabric or timber stain. Let our experienced team help you design furniture to suit your home. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian made manufacturing. Australian made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Barn's got top deals for top dads this Father's Day. Like a garage tough 194-piece tool bag kit for just $99. And a chicane 26-inch six-drop tool chest. Now $299. Auto Barn's. Now, a look at the quarter highlights. Gibson Live on TRFM. All right, Troy Harley wants to do what his teammates haven't been able to do, and that's find the big sticks. Guess what? He's found the big sticks. Good work, Troy Harley. Good work, Bob Faggy. The pressure back on sale. Just Mr. Harley. Distance won't be a problem. Off the boot. Looks pretty good. The umpire says, Troy, you've got two. And Harley's got another shot on goal. From 45 metres, right foot put it on its way. And the one Faggy supporters like it. And Gippsland Live on TRFM. This is the Halftime Wrap. Yeah, it is the Halftime Wrap. The margin sat at eight points at half t- quarter time. And now it's only six points. It's in favour, though, of one thaggy as Troy Harley kicked three goals in the quarter to Sales 1 through Jack Leslie, which means one thaggy 7-5-47 lead. Sale at halftime, 6-5-41.
Boxer is working through some of the key scores. Now we can let you know that there's a bit of an upset brewing at uh, North Gippsland Football, which is, of course, second semi-final day. Winner goes straight into the grand final box. Yeah, it's a very interesting score here as well. And I think it's that word momentum or continuity because TTU played like... What, what's the matter? No, that's fantastic, Box. Keep going. Futurously. I no, no, don't try and push your luck too far. Yeah. So it's TTU at half time, 9 4 58. <laughs> they lead your Lord North, 3 5 23. And, and in the mid Gippy, uh, it was a very low score in second quarter there. And Newborough only kicked the six points, but it still lead uh, over Tarwin, 2 8 20 to 1 3 9. Scud? Thank you very much. All those scores. Thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture Gippsland. And uh, don't forget, of course, the Harvey Norman Furniture store near you. You can upgrade to an Australian made mattress or or Ensemble, the leading Aussie brands as well. Paul Carter's got all the key stats in a half of football for us. And it's all thanks to Gippsland Isuzu. The new D-Max is born to live and born to tow. Well, the inside 50s once again very even. 10 apiece, in fact, uh, for the second quarter. Wontaggy leading that stat 23 to 22. Clearances are still going Wontaggy's way, 23 to 16. Centre clearances also to the, to the power, 11 to 4 to half time. They have also had the better of the free kicks to half time, 8 to 4 that quarter, 15 8 overall. Not a lot of marks taken. In that, that quarter, I think there they were, they, they was certainly no um, uh, tempo-type football being used uh, during that uh, foot, uh, quarter or half, for that matter. 26 to 19 of the marks, Wontaggy's way. Of those, Wontaggy have taken seven contested sale, four marks inside 50 to half time, uh, seven to Wontaggy and four to sale. Scores from set shots, uh, Wontaggy have kicked four goals, four from set shots, sale uh, three goals, three. The overall score was... Taggy have kicked three, four from turnovers and four goals, one from stoppages. And Sale, four goals, four from turnovers and two goals, one from stoppages. So far, I've worked through my way through the one Thaggy stats. And uh, the leading stat winner of the ones we're following is Jack Blair on 10, uh, his brother Jared on 9. Then we have um, Ryan Sparks on 7. Um, just looking very quickly here, Shannon Lang had five disposals that quarter to take him to 15. Uh, Jack McLaren's up to eight. Uh, Jaden Allison also on eight. Patrick Tange had another four then. That's seven. Jack Johnson is up to ten. Yeah, a couple of uh, interesting stats there. I guess the uh, the low possession count from a couple of the key midfielders, but it, it's a real battle, isn't it? It's uh, it's neither one thing or sale getting on top of the moment in the midfield. It's uh, certainly the efficiency when they go inside forward 50. Exactly. I mean, to the eye, it seems as though to me, to the eye, Sale, in that quarter, had many more forward entries for a long period of time, couldn't make the most of it. Yep. Even at quarter time, you recall, you felt as though Sale were in control for most of the quarter, but only led by a goal. I, I, I think missing two or three goals, which are very gettable goals in that quarter, might come back to haunt them. I mean, at the moment, they can st I, I still this is as good as I've seen Sale play, I've got to be honest, and I think they're quite capable of uh, still opening this game up a bit. But they're playing well. I just think that the inside 50 efficiency that you just spoke about as well is just concerning me a little bit. Just the way they're, they don't look confident when they're shooting at goal at the minute, and uh, they've had the opportunities to do so, but they're just really laying back in their kick. The thing for me is that Troy Harley show is starting to ramp up a little yes, bit. We've seen true. it be a match winner too. And if one thing you keep playing on that momentum, their first option is going to be to go inside to Harley all day, every day. So In the first quarter, it was uh, Aaron Murray Correct. as well. So they've got a couple of avenues. They have. And um, and then that's what will happen. It'll drop off from Harley. It'll go to uh, Andy Murray. Or, you know, and we've, we've seen Thomas can bob up as well too. So... Yeah, very interesting way it's going to sort of pan out, but uh, the midfield side of me for this second half, because um, it was a very big arm wrestle, will be interesting to see how they come out. All right, and just before we go to the break, of course, we're just doing the halftime wrap here at the moment, and the one thing you lead at uh, 7 5 47 to sale, 6 5 41. I've just got a bit of a. I've just got a, uh, the score that I gave in the North Gippy. It was the correct score in regards to 23 to 58, but I did say it was 9 4. It's actually 8 10. So they've had 18 scoring shots to 8 uh, TTU in that game at, uh, for, in the North Gippy. All right, and uh, you've got some North uh, Mid Gippsland as well for us for Harvey Norman the furniture. Yeah, but it's half time there as well. The New Barra 2-8-20. They lead Tarwin 1-3-9. So three goals scored. It must be a tight game down there at Stony Creek. All right, that pretty much wraps everything up here at half time. We've got a big half to go of this 2022 qualifying final. The Linter Energy final series is underway on beautiful blue skies and sunny uh, afternoon wherever you might be across Gippsland and the Valley. The third quarter is all coming up after the break and we do it for mcdonald's you are listening to gippsland live thanks to harvey norman electrical gippsland
TRFM. Music sounds better. We've got the new stuff you love. I got my head out this sunroof. I'm lost in our favorite tools. I only got one thing. And the old school songs you know all the words to. On the air at TRFM or check us out at Radio App and iHeartRadio. Voon Graham in Hayfield, your local Mitre 10 store. The team can help you whether you're painting the kids' room, doing some renovating outside or building a house. From taps to paintbrushes right through to timber and all things hardware, the Voon Graham Mitre 10 team have been helping the Hayfield community since 1930 and are with you in your projects, your gardens, your builds and your everyday purchases. They have what you need to get the job done, along with all the right advice to get it done properly. Mighty helpful, Mighty 10. Vern Graham in Hayfield. Grab a hot dog and settle in to support the Terrelgan Red Sox this season. See some of the best baseball in the Valley today when the Red Sox under-13s take on Churchill for the grand final at Terrelgan's KLP Reserve. Be there for the first pitch at 3pm and help the team bring home the cup. Thank you to this week's sponsor, Foodworks Highland Street, home of the $10 six-pack. Proudly supported by TRFM and the Terrelgan Bowls Club. More than just a bowls club on Lydiard Road. You hit the road early, it's a long drive, and you're starting to get a little weary from the sun in your eyes. Driving tired can have the same effect as driving drunk. If you've been on the road for two hours, take a 15-minute break. Stop in at the nearest McDonald's restaurant in Gippsland. It's the perfect place to stop. You can stretch your legs, enjoy a coffee from a cafe, or grab a quick snack. A 15-minute break every two hours could help save your life. Another road safety message from McDonald's Gippsland. Road safe and Gippsland's own TRFM. Hi Gippsland, I'm Jason Grewell, Victorian General Manager with Optus. If you're looking for great coverage and value, come in and see us at your local Optus Gippsland store. As we continue to upgrade and switch on new mobile towers, we invite you to come in and check out our newest mobile coverage maps for Gippsland. Plus, our excellent value on the latest plans, devices and offers. While you're there, chat with the team about our Optus Living Network with a series of on-demand features available through my Optus app. Visit us at Warrigal, Mid Valley, Tarragon, Sale or Bansdale or chat with us online today. Hi, it's Brent from Autobahn Tarragon here to tell you about our Top Deals for Top Dads catalogue, which is out now. Did you know we do batteries? With a huge range to suit most vehicles, including the Century Ultra High Performance, currently with 20% off. So drop in and let our friendly team find the correct battery for your vehicle and we can fit it for you in store. It's all part of the service at Autobahn Tarelgan. We're at 79 Princess Highway and we're open seven days. The Isuzu D Max is born to live. You can go your own way. With three and a half ton towing, you can bring all the toys. Get off road and play with 4x4 Terrain Command and a rear diff lock. And rock out with Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Plus, with a five-star ANCAP safety rating, the three-litre turbo diesel Isuzu D-Max is born to live. Test drive today at Gippsland Isuzu Ute on the Princess Highway to Ralgen, LMCT 10285. Harvey Norman, your destination for outdoor living. New season range in store now. The latest trends in timber, aluminium, rope and wicker. Outdoor lounges, dining, bar settings and more. With selected stock available for immediate delivery. Get 60 months interest free, no deposit, no interest from Latitude with 60 approximately equal monthly payments and receive a bonus gift card up to $1,000. Finance only available if you have or are approved for a participating Latitude credit card. Minimum finance amount $1,000. CTs and Cs. Interest applies for non-compliance. Fees and product exclusions apply. Get ready for outdoor living at Harvey Norman. Come and check out one of Gippsland's biggest and best ranges of quality furniture and bedding at Morelli's Furniture and Bedtime in Sale. Be amazed at the great range and the prices. Plus free delivery in Gippsland still applies. Remember, Morelli's Furniture and Bedtime, no excuses. Be there. Top Pub Morewell. 18 bucks. Pot and Palmer in the Sports Bar Monday to Friday. Free trivia every Wednesday from 7.30pm. $15 lunch in the Bistro Monday to Wednesday. The new Winter Bistro menu now available at Top Pub. Crispy bacon and juicy Aussie beef. Try the quarter pound of bacon at Macca's. This is the third quarter. Gippsland Live on TRFM. Let's get down, let's get down. Well, let's get down to business, all right, because they got to uh, the action pretty quickly and we had a clear attempt in the middle from Big Jack Leslie, who is a Gippsland Azuzu best on ground. It landed in the hands of Brad Dess and he now has a shot for goal and inside a minute... Sale have got the first goal, and that means scores are all tied up here at the Morwell Rec Reserve. 
for this big qualifying final match. We've got a game on now. Yeah, we have Poppy. We spoke about that quick play from Saar. We wanted to see that what Thaggy were doing in that second half of that se uh, second quarter. And they've just done that quickly with the man who's clearly best on ground at the moment. Inside 50 to a one-on-one -on -one was a great mark there by Brad Desson. And as you said, the scores aren't level. One minute into the third quarter, McDonald's gift fans scoreboard have both teams sitting on 7-5-47. So Huther has got the responsibility of trying to nullify what is going to be uh, the man that's grabbed this game by the scruff of the neck in big Jack Leslie and try to uh, bring him back to the pack. And they've done a pretty good job there. Oh, they just had an oh, attempt to... high. Well, they've been taken high. Lang, a free kick against Lang. They were just about to bust the pack in Aidan Lindsay. And so Lindsay from the centre of Morwell Rec Reserve and kicking to the town end has been called to play on, and that's what he does. Kicks to right half, forward flank. They've been pretty good up forward and finding their way to the front of the pack. Can they do it again? They can. Harley tackled, ball and all. The umpire says no opportunity. And he will ball this one up. It's just the one faggy side of the centre circle. Ball thrown up. Leslie's got front position. Huther, I thought, held him play on was the call. Nicely done. And off they go. Shannon Bray kicks to the advantage of his teammate, he hopes, as he comes grandstand side. That teammate was Patrick Tash, who was taken off the ball far too easily. Nicely done it was by Mitch Hayes. Oh. He was nicely tackled. And play on's the call, is it? No, swing no. tackle. Wow, swing tackle. I thought it was nice. The umpire didn't agree. So it's going to go one faggy's way. And it goes away of Mitch Hayes. Yeah, that's a poor decision. Yeah, yeah grandstand my, my wing, Mitch Hayes. Looks up forward now. They've been pretty good and pretty steady here. Takes his time, kicks inside, well, threatens the Ford 50. Can he find a winner? He can't. Who's going to be at ground level? Guess what? It's all black jumpers. And the player that comes up with it is Aiden Lindsay. Can he find oh. a teammate? It's one of the smallest blokes on the ground. In fact, it's probably the smallest bloke on the ground, but it's the best player on the ground in Jared Blair. Wow, good strong mark. One-on-one -on -one contest. The pressure was on. And your good players rise to the top, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well called, Poppy. Yeah, good call, Pop. So Jared Blair has got the opportunity to extend this lead back to six points, probably for the fourth or fifth time. Straight in front. Off the boot looks pretty good. And yep. it is very good. Jared Blair gets another one. And that's exactly what one thing he did when they win that ball inside 50. It was one-on-one -on -one with Blair. Even though he might not be the tallest player out there, uh, he knows how to use his body real well. And Mitch Brown didn't have much of an opportunity there because uh, experience is shone. Uh, and it was a great mark and a great finish as well. And at back to a six-point margin at the four-minute mark of the third quarter. McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. One thaggy, 8-5-53. Sale, 7-5-47. Uh, what a classic game where he's unfolding here at the Morwell Rec Reserve in qualifying final day. And this man, oh. Jack Leslie, just said, I might be the best player on the ground. He goes forward again, but big Kyle Reid stood tall. And the one thing he defender goes to the far side of the ground with the ball in his hand and boots it in the way of Andy Murray, who presents. He marked it half back. He comes in board on the 45. Nicely done to Noah Anderson. Anderson's got itchy feet. He wants to get going quickly. Hutchins is going to have to fly. He gets to the front spot there of Will Leslie. Nice. Great work by Jack Hutchinson. And his right foot kick delivery is neat too. He found this little fella in Jared Blair. And Gee, he's that having... kicking's been great today, haven't they? Finding a man, lowering the eyes, picking the right option, Scud. It's a great day for it as well. And a beautiful deck for Carpet Country this afternoon. They've done a wonderful job getting this ground prepared. It is like carpet as Blair just checks his kick to the shallow pocket. Harley can go up and elevate yeah. in front. And he takes the mark in front of Dyer. He's hard up on the boundary line, right in front of the windsock, which is hardly moving this afternoon. When you're hot, yeah. you're hot, though. I just thought by uh, the sale midfield, he's probably got a little bit to answer for there, too, because he had too much space inside. No one was covering the gap, and uh, he had an easy, easy place to lead into. So for the banana from the boundary line. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep. uh, dear, a... oh, dear, when you're hot, you're hot. And Troy Harley's got four. There's a Zambrero goal that a contender as well. There's two players that are making me really moan and groan this afternoon. If you hear me doing that all the time, this is, I'm in awe of, of Leslie in the ruck and Harley down forward because they're doing it all at the moment. And, uh, yeah, the efficiency by ball, like you said there, Poppy, has been fantastic there by one thaggy. And now the coach has thrown himself forward. And now he's actually put himself back into the middle. But him throwing himself yeah. forward for the first five minutes has been a real nutbreaker for him. 
And Harley's fourth goal takes uh, Wontaggy to a 12-point lead. We've played six minutes into the third quarter. McDonald's gives land scoreboard. Wontaggy 9-5-59, sales 7-5-46. And I know what you meant by nut breaker. No need to display it in the uh, commentary position. Uh, as sale go forward, nicely done to oh. was Shannon Lang. I tell you what, good hard contest. Either player gets up, though, and they uh, found the boundary line. So nicely done. I tell you what, there's uh, some players willing to put their bodies on the line. And as you should be in these sorts of games, these are the games that can, you know, shape reputations and careers and do the whole work. So quick kick forward. Guess what? Leslie gets it again from a standing start. Gets it 30 metres. Gets within 30 oh. metres. But a good punch finds the boundary line by Flynn Anderson. Well, that's a courage going back was Flynn Anderson. We spoke before about Lang going out of the game a little bit at the moment. Yep. Tom Davies gone to him at the minute and uh, has not let he, has left his sight for the whole quarter so far. So there's a tag on. 12-point margin. Favours one thaggy as we're going to shallow throw in. We'll do it again. Seven-minute mark of the all-important third quarter for McDonald's. Boundary throw in inside. Just inside forward 50 now for sale. McGuinness taps it down to Allison. Tries to get away from the stop. His left foot kick goes high. Going back with a flight. His sparks can't complete the mark. Laverty was there. Goes out the back there. Glen Ayn lost it. Trying to get his head over the football was Anderson again. And also in there, Jackson Glen Ayn. There's lots of numbers around this. Umpires let it go. Now, finally blows the whistle. Another stoppage this time. A little bit further around. Directly in front, just about. Sale attacking. Kyle Reed's there for the power. Couldn't get a handball. Clean one out. Laverty's quick kick will be picked off by Bates in the back half. So Bates now goes towards the outer side, right half back line. He's got a runner, and that runner is Sparks. He takes a bounce, looks up forward, got an opportunity to lower the eyes, and that's what he does. Can oh, he find your teammate? The kick was perfect because it found Aiden Lindsay from just outside Ford 50. And they don't normally waste the ball from here, although he. Feels as though, wow. and he looks as though he's going to kick for goal. Huth is on his own if he wants him still. Uh, he's backing himself in. He knows he can kick it. Okay, so he's going to kick from outside 50. Not a breath of wind in the air. The sun shining down. The ground is perfect. He kicks from just inside 50. Has he got the distance? He came within a metre or two, and then it was spilled over the boundary line. Or has it spilled over the boundary line? No. Play has stopped. But I reckon the ball's still in play. It is. And it'll be now ball, balled up within a metre of one Thaggy's goals. Right on the last line. Leslie tapped it straight down. Quick kick by Flight Lieutenant one free Todd. Kick. And it goes out. There'll be a whistle. It's going to go against Sparks inside his defensive uh, forward 50. So the Magpies will win it. Uh, it will be Laverty that will take the free kick in the back pocket. The margin's 12 points at the moment for one Thaggy. They've Opened up with two goals to one. Paul Cut, I'd love to know what uh, Lang's got so far for the game. Uh, 15 to half time, but 10 of those in the first quarter. So Laverty's kick goes to the wing, gets out the back. Here's Scott for the power. Gets a handball inboard to Blair. Gets around a little arm tackle. And the wobbly kick, though. Leslie can't complete the mark. Jack Hutchison does well. It's been a good battle this afternoon. Leslie finally gets a handball away. Out to the run there, though. Bates was able to come the other direction. Sales under a little bit of pressure now. They can't grab it cleanly. Lang will put a strong tackle on. We'll have another whistle and a stoppage. Wing area of the ground on the far side of the Morwell Rec Reserve under a blazing sunshine. Nine minutes gone, third quarter. 12 points is the margin. And Blair from this stoppage oh. runs around one. Right foot kick towards Harley. Can't mark it. Pendlebury's back. A free kick from the not officiating umpire. Set over the shoulder to Harley. And the officiating umpire was only 10 metres away behind the contest. So he would have had a clear, clear view of that. Well, the umpire saw it, and we'll give Harley another shot for goal number five. Woo! He got three in the second quarter. He's already got one in the third, and the big man's come to play today. He has been the difference so far, and Harley loves it off the boot. He trots and gallops oh. to his teammates, and he says, thank you very much. I'll have a high five. It's that efficiency by ball, isn't it, yeah. Bob? They're just uh, a lot cleaner with the ball, and they're finding their mark every single time. Even though that was a free kick, uh, the ball usage by one thing is probably giving them that edge in the game now, and hence the lead they have right now. That lead now, Boxer, is out to 18 points at the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. The McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard has the power on 10-5-65, sale 7-5-47. So, Wonthaggy, Ford of the ball are just willing to work harder 
running to space, sprinting to space. Salah using the same endeavour at this stage. Things can change pretty quickly. Free kick paid, holding the man again. The non-officiating umpire. Free kick will go the way of Wonthegi. Aidan Lindsay, the player, straight down the guts he goes. Why wouldn't you? Harley puts himself in contention, taken out of the contest fairly. Game on now. Round about centre-half for the pressure is on. Leslie takes on the direct tackler and collected a player while well, he had the ball as well, but he's taken to the ground and the umpire assumed control. Just Wonthegi's side of the centre circle Morwell Rec Reserve. 11 and a half minutes gone, third quarter. One thank you, 10 5. Sale 7 5. Umpire with control. Probably they've made the change now, so Will Leslie has now gone to Troy Harley, so we're expecting that matchup to happen eventually, and it's happened now after he's kicked his fifth. Well, yeah, nice move because Harley's been leading his opponent to the ball, and with strong hands, he's hard to stop. Let's see if he can make the distance. Uh, Allison taken with the ball, nicely done. Lang, quick tap to Glenane. Glenane, centre half forward. Good hard contest. Falls to the ground. First player there is going to be Ronke. Ronke tries to dance around one. Gives ground. Keeps possession. Glenane gets another go. Allison's the option in the centre. He's got options to his left. Plays the ball quickly, but gives the ball away. And now it falls in the arms of the opposition in Kyle Reid, who, guess what, has got all the room in the world to find Tim Knowles inside Ford 50. Wesley, uh, Leslie's first contest. Free kick. Another free kick. Against Harley, his height, his pace is proving to be too hard to stop. Yeah, they're caught again with the chop of the arms as well, so... He's let, got let, five, he can't kick six. He can. No, he can't. Watch this. He's at the From windsock. 50 metres out. The windsock into the ground. It is a renowned goal kick in pocket, that one there, isn't so it? So, Harley, with a boundary just a metre to his right, will kick. kick from 50 metres. He's kicked five. No, he couldn't kick six. Here you go, Pop. He kicks for goals. He's got it. He He's runs it. towards the centre of the oval. Oh, my goodness. He done what couldn't be done. He's got six and one figure on their way. When you've got uh, the confidence of the level of confidence that Troy Harley has right now, Poppy, he's at the windsock end wow. of the ground. And it is a renowned, and I've said it before, because Daryl's kicked a few goals from that pocket in the past. It can be done from there, and he just showed you how it was. I don't done. know when there's been a 10-goal final goal kicker. I know Paul Carter will look that one up at some stage, but I reckon it's been a little while. Wow. Score is 11-5-71. One thaggy, 7-5-47. Back to the middle they go. It's on the McDonald's scoreboard. Big moment right now, right here for the Moore Bowling Club, for the Magpies, as a lane kick goes in forward. And again, it's going to be turned over. Bates marks. As I just look down at the sale coach's box, I can see Mitch Thacker down there, who's not playing today. He was a late out. He's probably looking at this and going, I would have been playing on Troy Harley this afternoon, but... And when he's hot, I'm not sure it might have been any difference. Another free kick, not officiating yeah, umpire for too high in the was it marking contest. Travis Krauss will be the one. He's on half back for the power. Comes in board. Here's Davey all on his own. The Magpies need to sharpen up or this game's gone. As Davey's on the wing, gets around McLaren, goes in the direction. This time, no, can't mark. Goes to ground. Here's Jack Hutchison oh. with pace. He hevels over the top. He's got Anderson. He kicks it over. Harley's all on his own and he's going to mark on his chest. You may have called this. Unbelievable. You may have called this. Poppy, well, how did he get it his own? He did. He, he just peeled off. Peeled off Leslie. the contest. And what Leslie likes to do, he likes to get high in the yep. contest. He drew. He said, I'll yep. see you later. Yep. So all on his own in the goal square. He's taken the mark. He's on a slightish angle. He's about 15 metres out. He's got six as Troy Harley. Paul Carter's feverishly going through the record books. <laughs> as we're looking for 10 this afternoon. Harley has... Seven! Wow, Lee, this game shot done to pieces. The margin's 30 points, Box. Wow. <laughs> He's kicked seven straight. Let's let's be uh well, let's talk about that too. But again, it's that efficiency by ball and by one thaggy. They're using the ball and they're spreading one. It's that work rate too. They are running hard and they're running and they're spreading real hard and they're using the ball very well. So they're actually scoping the ground, making sure they hit it to the best option and getting that ball. Get the ball inside fifty quickly to Harley and you know he's gonna score. Guys, those five goals have come in eleven minutes <laughs> and the five goals have come in six inside fifties. So it's a thirty point mark. 
margin on the McDonald's gift stand scoreboard, 12.577 to 7.547. All right, some changes will need to be made. I'm not sure what those changes are going to be. Keep an eye on them because Sale can't keep on doing what they're doing at the minute. Jack Leslie's gone loose. So That's Jack a challenge. Leslie, uh, a spare man in defence. They've got to stop the leakage, and there's plenty of leakage in the way of Troy Harley. Right half forward flank umpire will take control. Guess what? One faggy into attack once more. Just repeating that score, 12-5 on the back of five straight goals to sail 7-5. So what they've done, they've made Will Leslie the spare and now his brother Jack has gone to Harley, which now the best player on ground yes. has to cover the best player from one thaggy. So I'm not sure about that move. <laughs> well, it, it allows Will Leslie then just to run and carry. Yep. Just go. He, we want to see him carry the football through his defensive 50 and through the middle part of the ground. Will it happen? Who knows? All right, McGuinness gets the tap and Sale get the clearance. Can they find a winner? They can. Nice mark it was too. Taken by Jesse Collins. Plays on quickly. That's what they need to do. On the end of that one is Kyle Reid. In, in fact, it wasn't but uh, it was Sale and they've kept the ball in play. Nicely done too. It was by Josh Bates and they open up the door. Ryan Bendelbury lays a tackle. Closes the door but only for another one faggy player in Stephen Scott to go forward inside Ford 50. Leslie's first big test makes it an even contest. Uh -oh. level. Hutchinson, Harley handballs, looking for a teammate. He finds that teammate in Hoother and now a left foot kick forward by Dawson to within 20 metres and sailing oh. all sorts of pressure and bother and they can't possibly keep it going. Or can they? Yeah, they can. Sail so marks through Jake Hutchins. Wow. A frantic football. And Sail composed himself. Hutchins kicks it out wide and finds a teammate. On the far side of the ground, looks to be Glenn it was, comes in board, finds his coach in Johnson. They're slow play now for the Magpies to bound, and they switch the play out wide to Penderbury. Grandstand side of the rec reserve. Penderbury oh, goes to yeah. the wing. Does it get over the top of Murray's ha Hayes' head? Not quite. Working hard. Good work there by Lang. He's got some toe an acceleration and kicks down the line. McGuinness will go up and fly. Can't mark there. Good spoil by Bray. Comes to ground level. Knowles is swamped in a tackle. Two tackles, in fact. Ronke and Campbell for the Magpies. We're going to ball up. 18 minutes gone. The margin quickly out to 30 points on the back of Troy Harley's four goals in a row. Well, now he, Troy Harley's in the ruck. So uh, they've exchanged uh, rucks, haven't they? Harley's gone to ruck and now he's going to come to the boundary. Can you believe that? Just to give him a breather. They may feel as though they've done enough. I reckon there's still life in this game. As Blair, uh, Jack Blair for one thing, he goes towards the right half forward flank. Nicely done. Inside forward 50. They've got so many players willing to work, and it's paying off in plenty of dividends. Tiziani, can he find a winner? He can't. Grand level. Oh, look at this. A good tackle on Johnson. Oh. I reckon that's holding the ball. And they've played on, and I reckon they may have gold. Or have they? They should have taken the kick. It was Jack Hutchinson who laid the tackle, but he didn't get the opportunity to goal. The adrenaline kicked in, and one faggy with all the momentum thought they'd get another on the scoreboard, and they didn't, Paul Carter. It's 31-point lead to one faggy at the 19-minute mark of the third quarter. 12.678 to 7.547 on the McDonald's Gift Saint scoreboard. You can feel it. The power supporters, the power players, they can smell blood. And they're going in for the kill as Penderbury goes straight down the middle of the ground. It's stumped back by Lenahan, but the free kick will be given to the Magpies, and they're happy with the free kick to Brad Desson. He's got McGuinness, decides not to go there. <coughs> decides now to kick it out wide. He's got a lateral kick out there in Hutchins. A run and draw handball to Penderbury, and a 50-metre penalty as Krauss just crept over the man on the mark. Well, they must have thought one thing he was on fire that much. They've called the fire brigade in. So you can see there's a fire <laughs> yeah, they're here. The right behind the goals there. They are here as well. Been here since 9 o'clock. But anyway, Jack Hutchins, 20-minute <laughs> mark of they, the they knew, so they third quarter. Looks up, goes in towards the pocket area. Over the back, strong mark standing his ground. A free kick's going to be paid, though, against the Magpies. Allison took the mark, but he's had to give the footy up to Kyle Reid, who is that loose man now, as we spoke about, for the power. So see Reid come into the game. His kick is a nice, neat one to find Bates on the halfback flank. They're just too good in the one-on-one -on -one contest. They're too good at finding space. Sale so have had their chances, haven't made the most of them. One thing, you've made the most of every chance and created some on top of that. 
And the scoreboard now a reflection of that as Jack Blair, right half back flank, goes short. I reckon that's the bro he's <laughs> found in Jared. They do that quite a bit, and Jared goes, plays on quickly. Nicely done, too, to Travis Krauss, right half forward flank. Centers it up and tackled. So all of a sudden, we could have a. Uh, a turnover we haven't because Hutchinson came in. Geez, he looks uh, he looks a likely type. He's got some pace, causing some problems as Sale tried desperately to ease the pressure through Pendlebury. And now to the big man in Jack Leslie. Kicks more in hope than anything else, but he'll get Allison on the end of it. Oh. Shows a bit of a shimmy, keeps the ball in play, and then kicks to the advantage of his teammate. The ball spills within metres of goals and then runs over the uh, goal line for a rare score in this third quarter. In fact, first score since the one-minute mark of the uh, quarter when Brad Desmond gold. They're going to go again, the Magpies. They go back in. The kick out full back of the poor one. And Taint found Johnson. All right, they're five goals down. How close do they need to be to give themselves a chance of winning this in 30 minutes of football of the final quarter, given we've still got five to go? So they need to be within three goals. Three, yeah, okay. 18 points is my margin as well. OK. So this is the big moment for the Mall Bowling Club this afternoon. Don't forget, Pot and Palmer tonight for only 20 bucks. as Jack Johnson comes in. He's going to have to kick it all of 55 metres. I think the distance might be a little bit beyond him. As he puts it on its way, it's going to go deep. It's not going to make the distance in the end. Brad Desson had three to beat, couldn't do so. And we've got a minor score, 22 minutes gone in this third quarter, the all-important third quarter, Paul. I would have liked to see Jack Leslie down there on the goal line there competing for that mark. Uh, so. 7 7 49, 29 points in arrears of Wontaggy, but 12 6 78. All right, maybe uh, Blair, he just got another mark and another kick, starting to put his hand up as one of the better players of the day, as well as Flynn Anderson on that outer side goes towards the right half back flank where it spills over the boundary line. So a boundary throwing to take place, left half forward flank for sale, right half back flank for Wontaggy. The power leading by just under five goals, 29 points is the margin you just heard. McGuinness fights hard for the ball. Here they go. So can they find a bit of room to search forward? They can't. Want Thaggy staying strong. Second and third on the ladder. Playing for the right to take on the league leaders, Lee and Gatha, next week. No easy task. But they've got a bit of work to do for either side yet. I could quickly do a round of grounds. Thanks to the Hyper Normie Furniture in Gippsland. And it's Newborough 3 10 28. They lead Tarwin 1 3 9. Well, low scoring game there. Conditions clearly not the same as no. what they hear at Moore. We've got a free kick from this stoppage. It's going to go the Magpies' way. Can they build something late in the third quarter? They trail by 29 points, and McGuinness rolls around, puts it inside forward 50. Big fly from Freeman for the side. Reed stood tall. He had first bite, and he had second bite. Brad Desson's down as well, boys. Keep an eye on that. And Kyle Reed, we know he's playing the loose man at the moment. Although they may have just rolled the dice for this last couple of minutes. The power, they went lateral to Scott and then inboard to Flynn Anderson. He can come out wide again and find a teammate in Knowles, and he does that. I think he's in trouble there, Brad Desson. He hasn't moved so too much since he got hurt. Maybe winded by the looks. So Knowles kicks down the line. Here's Harley. Does it stay in the field of play? No. Uh, the free kick will go in the way. Well, maybe. It, you know, he might have got a kick in the old... Uh, yeah, in yeah. the old... Uh, in your joke. Yeah, in the, the marble bag. In, in your marble bag. <laughs> which you tried to give a joke out this morning about, uh, this afternoon about it. The yeah. Who, who, who was it? <laughs> um, who, who? I don't know. As Will Leslie's been told to move around. I'm not sure he can come any further around. Yeah, they may as well be up in the commentary position. Yep, 24 minutes have passed. That's the power by 24, 29 points. Leslie's kicked down the line. Yeah. Shannon Lang strong. In a contested mark on Knowles was good. I think he might be too far out to score as well, though. The man on the mark stands at 49. Gee, some of these mid-sized players have got great hands, haven't they? Himself, Jared Blair. Pendlebury Jack should Blair. be making himself an option. Just run past him into that pocket. Yeah, yep. you know, I mean, it's no use there. No, exactly right. And no one's in that pocket either. So Lang decides Look. to chip it off, and he's going to go in the way of Collins. Good work. He's a nice user of the football. And Jesse Collins now, it's his moment to stand tall. I think Ryan Penderbury was looking for the hands off uh, on his yeah, the left side. It, it, and, agreed. And they covered him with Jack Blair. Yeah, agreed. But it wasn't going to happen, was it? Wow, well, geez, I tell you what, if ever there's an important goal after the siren. And another quarter that's only gone 25 and a half minutes, so we're quickly whipping through these quarters. But this is a big moment right here for the Magpies. They trail by 29 points. They're going into three-quarter time with a deficit. What will it be? 
as Collins comes in from 40 metres out. It's a wobbly punt kick, oh, wow. and it's going to miss just about everything, but it squeezes in for a minor score. 28 points is the margin that it will be at three-quarter time. And boy, oh boy, did the power put the foot to the metal and the foot to the floor as well, Boxer, because Troy Harley show he kicked... Well, he kicked three goals in the second quarter, and then he matched it and kicked four goals in that third quarter. Can he kick five in the last? Well, let's find out. That's Poppy in the background. He's already switched <laughs> off. We're going to get to a break. It's the third quarter, all done and dusted, and the margin sits at 28 points. It's Gippsland Live for Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. In 2022, TRFM is dedicated to providing Gippsland and the Valley with quality local news. A third candidate has entered the fight for the seat of Morwell in the November election. Dale Harriman will stand again for the Liberal Party, as he did in 2018, in a fight against Labor's Kate Maxfield and the Nationals' Martin Cameron. Incumbent MP Russell North is retiring at this election. Part of Gippsland and the Valley's way of life. TRFM, on the air and on iHeartRadio and Radio app. The hand-crumbed, perfectly crunchy, goldenest schnitzelus is often found resting happily in a wrap or roll, satisfying ravenous post-match hunger. There's only one habitat for such a delectable morsel, and that's schnitz Are you getting that feeling? That Dante's Pizza feeling? Yeah, I'm thinking Gippsland's most authentic buffalo wings. Mmm, juicy. Spicy. Tender on the inside. Crispy on the outside. Oh, and hot jam donuts smothered in cinnamon sugar. Filled with mouth-watering jam. I love your ideas. You can thank Dante's. Dante's Pizza, making every bite count. Give in to the rich flavours at Dante's Pizza. Druin and Moe. How's your mobile phone going? Battery always running flat? Cracked screen? Then upgrade to a new mobile phone from Harvey Norman Computers Gippsland, where buying a mobile phone is easy with a showroom full of mobile phones Unlocked or on a plan. The best range in brands like Apple, Samsung, Nokia, Oppo and much more. Plus, being a premium Optus dealer, they have amazing offers to get you connected. Head to your local Harvey Norman Computers Gift Plan store today. G'day, can I help you? Uh, yes, I hope so. I'm digging a trench in our backyard, uh -huh. so I need one of those machines yep, that yep, goes yep. cook, uh -huh. cook, cook. <laughs> oh, you need an excavator. Excavator, right, if you say so. And then to flatten out the dirt, I was thinking one of them... A doon, 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 uh, thing about That'd be a whacker plate. We know which piece of equipment you need for your project, even if you don't. We hire them too. Mini loaders, drum rollers, tipper trailers and more. See you soon. Gippsland, Wacker, Noisen and Latrobe Valley Forklifts. Visit lvforklifts.com.au Style has a new home in Gippsland and it's Carpet Country. Carpet Country is proud to announce the launch of the Country Tiler. Building on decades of experience sourcing tiles from all over the world that condensed all of their knowledge into one stunning new contemporary showroom. Room. With stunning tiles hand sourced from only the finest suppliers, they have something for everyone and with special orders and almost limitless buying power. Soon to be Gippsland's exclusive home of Laminex, the only limitation is your imagination. Drop in to see them at Argyle Street, Tarelgan. Australian made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Mattresses and ensembles from the leading Australian brands. Lounge furniture and dining room furniture built for the family life with a great selection of options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Create your own bedroom furniture. Customise your bed height, fabric or timber stain. Let our experienced team help you design furniture to suit your home. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian-made manufacturing. Australian-made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Go, Harvey, go. You hit the road early, it's a long drive, and you're starting to get a little weary from the sun in your eyes. Driving tired can have the same effect as driving drunk. If you've been on the road for two hours, take a 15-minute break. Stop in at the nearest McDonald's restaurant in Gippsland. It's the perfect place to stop. You can stretch your legs, enjoy a coffee from a cafe, or grab a quick snack. A 15-minute break every two hours could help save your life. Another road safety message from McDonald's Gippsland, Road Safe and Gippsland's own TRFM. The hand-crumbed, perfectly crunchy, goldenest schnitzelus is often found resting happily in a wrap or roll, satisfying ravenous post-match hunger. There's only one habitat for such a delectable morsel, and that's Schnitz Turalgen. Now, a look at the corner highlights. Gippsland live on TRFM. Straight in front, off the boot, looks pretty good, and it is. Good, get it, catch another one. So for the banana from the boundary line. Yeah. 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 When you're hot, you're hot. And Troy Harley's got four. There's a Zambrero goal and a contender as well. 
Charlie, his height, his pace is proving to be too hard to stop. He's got five. He can't kick six. He can. No, he can't. Watch this. So, Harley, with a boundary just a metre to his right, will kick, kick from 50 metres. He's kicked five. No, he couldn't kick six. Here you go, Pop. He kicks for goals. He's got it. He He's runs towards it. the centre of the oval. Oh, my goodness. He done what couldn't be done. He's got six and one figure on their way. The Harvey Norman Computers Gippsland. Save on HP, Lenovo and Acer today. Three down, one to go. The final quarter is about to start. This is Gippsland Live on TRFM. Wowie, what a quarter of football from the power. They led by six points at half time. It got out to 28 points at three quarter time on the back of one man, Troy Harley, kicking four goals in the third quarter. And the final quarter for Harvey Norman Computers is underway in Atutha and Leslie, who tapped it down. Running onto that one there was Lindsay. A little tap back there from Blair, but it lands in the hands of Jack Leslie. He quickly got tackled. The power in full control. Hootha got it to Davey. Back to Hootha, who kicks around the body and down towards half forward. Leslie, this is Will Leslie now on Troy Harley. And he crashes his way through. Harley is strong as an ox, and they couldn't dislodge him. And the free kick's going to be paid. Out of bounds on the full. So Blair was the one. Goes in board to Dawson. He's got Jared Blair on a long searching lead. Thomas is the other tool. He goes to Thomas' direction and back in the hole was Ryan Penderbury of the Magpies. Well, Penderbury with no one on the mark just at the moment. No, popping in quickly was Krauss. Penderbury through the corridor. Can he find a gap? Oh. He can, but he can't find a teammate. And that's crucial in this game. As uh, one thing, he got an opportunity to bother the scoreboard. First time, no free kick. Bobbing up. Didn't get a clear disposal. Free kick will go to Cooper Whitehill. Centre half back through. Whitehill looks to his right, runs to his right, and kicks to right half forward flank. Nicely done. Finds a teammate, and Sale could be on their way. Plays on quickly. Nicely done. I reckon Glenane it was. Glenane inside Ford 50. They need a winner early. They need to find a goal in the opening minutes to give themselves some sort of chance. Can they find a way oh. through? That's the $64 question. The answer's simple. Not yet. One thaggy clear the area. Go looking for Blair. He's been bloody good. Couldn't get a handle on that one, but he'll get a second chance. And he finds the safe option of the boundary. And from 75 metres... From sales goals, there'll be a boundary throwing grandstand side with one thaggy leading by 28 points. One and three quarter minutes gone, final quarter. Boundary umpire gets it back into the field of play. In the front spot, McGuinness. Over the back, though, was Hooter. Kick off the ground from Davey. Here's Jared Blair in the front spot. Protects it well. Ga Oof. Gathers it. Driven in the ground from Mitch Bound. Uh, now, what was wrong with that tackle compared to the other one as well? Well, the umpire said same. it wasn't. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, okay. It's the only difference. If it was black <laughs> or blue. Yeah. Uh, as in the uh, coloured sail or power, is that what you're talking about? It doesn't matter. Well, so all right. As this time, Lindsay just coughed it up. Here's Lang. Run and draw handball. Good to Whitehill. He's going to kick to the fat top. Beautiful kick. Go. Oh, McLaren put one hand up. Couldn't quite get it. Lent a hand. Oh, got crunched by Des and comes the other way. Now Bray's under enormous pressure. The Magpies desperate for a goal inside this forward 50. Although picking it up there was Scott, and he's able to run clear. There's no one out, so he's kicked, dribbles along the ground. Tainch has it, comes in board to Jack Johnson. He can mark, he can have a look inside forward 50, and he can deliver, but step tall as the midfielder sparks. <laughs> boy, oh boy. He squared it out towards Jack Blair. And now Jack Blair's able to run and carry and have a bounce outside 50. He's run a long way. He took a bounce, though, umpire. He ran only 15 metres with a bounce. Are you kidding me? We might I'm just, uh, not sure the umpire saw the bounce. I don't think he did because he's actually remonstrating with him yep. in regards to well, anyway, the bounce. Cooper Whitehill has the footy for the Magpies. They trail. By 28 points, rolls around, right foot kick, goes towards Jack Leslie, Reed flew, front and square was Jack Johnson. Oh, good pressure from behind, just causes the kick to go off the side of the boot, and a big spoil by Lenahan. There's a free kick, and that's silly from the one Wontaggy defender. He put down Jared Freeman, no need at all, did Shannon Bray. And Freeman will have a kick now, and those little moments... Well, the Magpies, first of all, have to take advantage of this boxer, but... They've got to chip away now. This is the yep. first part of that chip. So, 
So Jared Freeman with a banana from the boundary, puts it through. No, he misses everything. And it stayed in the field of play, if you can believe it. He kept the belly of the ball. And the mark's taken by Scott of Wonthaggy. So Scott comes grandstand side, looking for an option there. Out the back of the pack, good fly, but Leslie, in fact, uh, Jack Hutchins, uh, Jake reads it best. That's Jake Hutchins that reads it best, but again, they just can't find winners inside that Ford 50 at all. I just know this umpire is just the over-umpire of the game now. Let it play, let it go, let it free flow. So they come out of defence again to the power. And they try to use the ball as well as they can. Uh, Pushing the back. He's going to come one thag his way. It's going to go the way of Krauss. Right half back flank. Plays on quickly. Goes short to Blair. Slowly starting to bubble up towards the best player on the ground, I would think. Taking the title from oh. Leslie as a consequence of the scoreboard more than anything else. This guy's good. And I tell you what, <laughs> Harley, Harley too. He's... Uh, what the other contender. What he's doing up there? <laughs> yeah. Back into the goal square. He's what kicked seven goals today. It's been quite a remarkable performance by Troy Harley. Now he goes short. Travis Krauss. Remembering that there haven't been really long quarters. No. 25 minutes. Pr pressure is on sale to make something out of nothing. And Lasley tries to do just that. Can he get a hand on the ball? He can, but he can't get clear air to find a teammate. And Blair's letting... Krauss, no, he needed to go long and along the boundary. Rather than have a ball up in the corridor, let's have a boundary throw in 30 metres closer to our goals. Quick kick forward from Sale. Again, cut off by one thaggy. Nicely done, too. Oh, it falls uh, from McGuinness. And now Pendlebury to Allison. And Allison goes in board to a teammate in Jack Johnston. They need a winner right here in Ford 50, and Allison's the only option. Normally uses the ball pretty well. Left foot kick. Oh. Now it's a three on one contest, and the three was the opposition. They're fighting hard just to keep the ball in the area, Sale, but that's at this the, point, the best they can do. A free kick is going to go Sale's way. I think Shannon Lang was the tackler there, Pop. Yeah, take well, a breath. Pop. There's a player down as I well. I need to take a breath. There's a one thaggy player down in all sorts. Has not moved after he hit the deck. And not looking good as well. Face first at the moment. Maybe locked, maybe knocked down in the tackle. Yeah, it could have been. I don't want to preempt uh, who it is. It's a bit hard to see the number at this stage, but he has not moved on the ground out there. And it's going to be a sail shot on goal, but we might just have a little bit of a uh, stoppage in play until this is right... We where the free kick was paid. And the man on the mark is standing about a metre away from the injured player at the moment. So currently we've just got a hold at six and a half minutes on. In the final quarter, Sale have had all the play and they haven't been able to score. Inside forward 50s in this quarter, Paul. It's uh, six to Sale and one thing he had the first one. So... And they still trail by 28 points at the moment. And the player, so we've had a, uh, a spectator come on the ground as well, probably a someone could be a health parent. profession. Yeah, yep. I'm not sure. but um, So they might be a little bit reluctant to move the player at the moment because he is still face down and a couple of trainers around him, so they'll take all precautionary here. And Was that the player tackled? No, I think it was. I think the uh, I think it was a player that was uh, over the top. I think it was. There was a two or three players around the contest, and it was a consequence of the tackling contest. But then it wasn't the player being tackled. So okay. both clubs now have come together, uh, or each of the clubs have got to uh, in a bit of a huddle. As the player is still down, the uh, stretch is about to come onto the ground. Now the player has moved. We can see a number. It is, I can let you know, that it's uh, Mitch Hayes, who's the player in, um, in injury strife at the moment. He's, they've rolled him over onto his, uh, onto his back, and they're obviously out there checking up around that neck area as I have a look through the, uh, the binoculars here. So a bit of a stoppage in play. Uh, boxer, I've just been told, just from a spectator that's close by, he said it was just a, a heavy bump from Descent. So he's sore as well, but obviously not as sore as what Hayes is at the minute. So okay, uh, it was looked like it was something was not right. seen from us. So the stretch has come out, but uh, 
Might have been uh, just waved away. It's still going to go out to the ground. Uh, Boxer, you've got some scores for us. We'll go do those. It is around the grounds this afternoon, all thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. And there's a couple of big finals games going on. Of course, you can upgrade to an Australian-made mattress or ensemble at the leading Aussie brands. And we've got a couple of... Uh, we would call upsets brewing now in both uh, in both leagues. In the mid-Gippsland Football League, three-quarter time saw Newbar 4-10-34. They lead Tarwin 1-3-9. I should still add, it's, they're playing in perfect conditions down there, so the game must be very, very tight. And in the uh, North Gippsland Football League, this is the upset I'm thinking it's going to be brewing. It's TTU 12-12-84. They lead you law North 4-8-32. Wow, that is that is a fall back to earth for the Jets, isn't it? Wow. I, I can let you know the... Oh, sorry, Paul. I can let you know a couple of other scores while we're going. The AFLW has kicked off this weekend as well. Uh, a couple of games have already been played. Collingwood got over the top of the Carlton uh, in the first game. The Adelaide Crows couldn't get the job done against Melbourne. And the game that's uh, already just been completed today, the Kangaroos win by 26 points. It was North Melbourne 6-4-40, defeating the Gold Coast Suns. Oh, good two, on that. Alistair Clark's really starting to yeah. make a difference there, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is uh, having an impact across uh, both uh, men's and women's football. Poppy? As he coached both. Paul Carter's got <laughs> some key Poppy, contract. In answer to your question about yes. uh, 10 goal finals, uh, last one to do is Adrian Burgill for Mafra versus Garfield. 20, 2007 prelim final and the one before that was the 2002 prelim final. Tim Hooper from Wontaggy against Moe kicked 10. Very good. He's a good man. Isn't go. he? This is something that you don't see very often but um, they're, they're bringing Hayes off the ground and we've got the emergency umpire helping with the stretcher as well. So good. it's yep. all hands on deck which is fantastic to see. And I think Mum's alongside as well. I don't know if it's mum. I think it's uh, like a, a health official that was over there. Okay. She jumped the fence and, and come over. All right. So. Well, uh, they're making his way off. They've still got about... Uh about uh, 50 metres to go. Just before we do that, the uh, Gippsland uh, Grand Final, the first of the Grand Finals across Gippsland, has been played this afternoon, and it was up in the Omeo and District Football Netball League up there. Boxer, I know you're looking it's, a little bit concerned. It's uh, a bit... It's still still up it, there, didn't it? During it did week? during the week, and uh, of course, the, uh, it was great conditions for, throughout the game, but a, a big win to Lindeno South. They win at 15-12, 100 to this defeating Swift Creek 10-7-67 in that uh, game of football. As uh, just repeating here, we've had a probably about a six minutes pull, I think a six minute stoppage uh, of play. Uh, Mitch Hayes uh, in a heavy bump, a fair bump in the end, uh, just didn't come off uh, too well and he's being carried off the ground there. Obviously concerned around his uh, neck and back area as well, but they've got him under the stretcher and they're taking him in the rooms. He's in uh, very good care. They want to make sure that they uh, get him through this last little bit of the ground as the game is back underway here at the 11.5-minute mark. And as we said, Shannon Lang's going to have a shot on goal and a much-needed one. He kicked underneath it a little bit. It's not going to make the distance. A big spoil over the back. Front and square there was Blair. That was Jack. He kicks around his body, gets over his teammate's head and... Able to run onto this one is Hutchins from Sale. Handballs to Whitehill. Gets around one. Handballs over the top to Collins. Gives it back to Hutchins. And then got dumped from Jack Blair. Good tackle. pressure. And it's holding the ball. Free kick goes to Blair. So Blair just outside defensive 50. Actually now enters defensive 50. So loses ground but keeps possession through Stephen Scott. They change direction. Nicely done too. Cole Ooh. Reed goes towards the outer side after ducking around his man ever so uh, confidently. And off they go again now. Tiziani from halfback kicks. Searching for around about half forward. Looking for that man, Murray, who was so good in the opening quarter when they needed someone to stand up. They can't get past Leslie. Will Leslie kicks towards Lang on the outer side. One thaggy outnumber Lang two to one and now threatened forward 50 again. Who's got the numbers? Both sides even behind player, sale player down. It could be Allison again. And the umpire will take control. So yeah, Allison's just a bit proppy. Proppy, yeah, on that uh, right leg. He'll need to stand up and contest, though, because they've got the numbers one thaggy, so he does his best to hold the ball in. And he does a really good job, too. In fact, he earns himself the free kick on one leg. Allison all of a sudden feels better. Why wouldn't you? Halfback flank, ball in hand. Game still at the beckoning. Goes straight down the guts. Can he find a teammate? He can. I thought a good, strong mark yep. it was by the big man in Brad Descent. So Brad Descent reels on the right foot, goes towards Collins, comes off his man, does Scott. A big contest again, and Scott does well. Crash, bang, I'll get the football, and then kick it out to my teammate in Blair. 
And my coach can take the mark. No score yet in this final quarter, and the margin's still at 28 points. It's in favour of the power. Gets in the hands now of Murray. Half forward flank, slow build up. Down the line to Jack, Hut Jack Hutchison. Hasn't got a goal this afternoon. His teammates certainly have. He drives his right boot into it, gets over the back. Thomas couldn't mark. Pendlebury was there as well. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Hard up against the point post. One thaggy tacking 50. And they lead it by 28 points. We're in full control, box up. We yeah. sure are, Scud. And I'm just going to try and get a, a score for the A-grade netball as well. Of course, the so, game out there was uh, Lee and Gather taking on Moey. So ball into attack. One thing, you get the next goal, say goodnight. And that's what they're going to try to do right now. Blair feeds it off, quick kick, smothered. Who's going to be the first player there? Jake Hutchins handballs quickly. Can they find their way through? They can. Pendlebury gives and they run in numbers. On the end of it's going to be Jesse Collins. Goes inboard. Then the pressure from one thing, he's pretty good. But it was deemed illegal. So there'll be a free kick that comes Sales way. They go inboard to Allison. He wants to give and he does. Jake Changes direction, comes inboard, searching Bowen, finds that player. Left half forward flank. They're just chipping, trying to find a way through. Maybe this bloke's got the uh, opportunity to do it in Jackson Glenane. So Glenane goes short. Geez, they're taking their time, aren't yeah, they? Going a lot, long way around it. They haven't got time. Mitch lots of, Bowen. Lots of numbers now back, Poppy. Yeah, they have. In fact, 16 of the 18 players, a defensive side of the centre for one thaggy. Free kicks. And a sale. free kick's been paid. Geez, there's been a lot of free kicks paid sales way, but they haven't made them pay. This time, Jax Johnston will get another opportunity. He needs to make the most of this one. Yeah, the free kicks, though, we've seen a lot of are inside 50, too. So we've yep. seen a, quite a lot of those uh, fall in both ways. Um, um, yeah, but obviously in favour of one thaggy at the moment because Harley's got three of them inside 50 as well. So Jack Johnson directly in front. Big moments are right here right now for the Moore Bowling Club this afternoon for this Sale Magpies outfit. They trail by 28 points. And this just must go through if they're a chance, the Magpies. Johnson directly in front, leans back on it and pulls it and misses badly. It's the first score of the last quarter, and we've travelled 16 minutes, although it's about 10 minutes of actual game play. 7-9-51 sale. They trail one thing by 27 points on the Harvey Norman computer score. Dawson can get this from half-back. Slips over, allows Lang to come in and put a little bit of pressure on. Gets a handball back to Davey. He got tackled quickly as well. And Lang and Scott do battle. We've got a stoppage. McGuinness tapped it straight down. Comes the other way to Sparks. Lang tried to crash his way through three one thaggy tacklers. Needless to say, he couldn't get through. Another stoppage. Final quarter. This is a qualifying final. Lee and Gatha sit and wait. And interesting if it is one thaggy. The two from South Gippsland. Needless to say, they don't like each other much. <laughs> uh, left half forward flank. So just can't get it going, can they? No. Nope. One thaggy are blocking and stopping and desperately tackling and doing everything they can to keep this margin that they have had now for a quarter and a bit. Half forward flank it is at the moment. Sale again trying to find a way through. Pendlebury lays a tackle. Huther a kick around the body. It's going to find the boundary and it does too. And Blair just makes sure and takes the ball over the boundary line. Left half forward flank, grandstand side, 17 and a half minutes gone. Yeah, probably just a quick update in the mid Gippy uh, final. We played down at Stony Creek and it's Newborough, 6 12 48. They've got a comfortable lead over Tarwin, 2 4 16. So the Bulldogs will find their way through to the 2022 mid Gippsland Football Netball League grand final to be played at more least on September the 10th. Ball up again, McGuinness taps it down. He got a free kick. Will the advantage be paid? No, it was too much of a. A bobble around. McGuinness wins a free kick from the stoppage. He looks up. Got to move it quickly. Get it over these one thaggy defender's head. Goes in the direction of Jack Leslie, but it's a shallow kick. And Jack Blair can take the mark. He can toss a coin between Jack and Jared, who's been better. But for Gippsland, Azusa Youth, they've both been very good. He goes backwards, and he can find Knowles on the last line of defence. Jared for me, Pop. Yeah, Jared for me too. Yeah. I'd uh, nearly agree. It's a big kick from Knowles. Goes to Hutchison. <laughs> he takes a hanger and the crowd love it. What a week. And he rolls around and gets a sweeping handball inboard to Knowles. He can deliver it to half forward. Lindsay protect, 
protected the drop zone, and he can go and get it again, does Aiden Lindsay. Look at this. And he gets it over the top. Just Harry Dawson go, go. can mark all who he wanted to play on. He's got a player on if he wants. No. Harry Dawson will take his time and will just about put an exclamation mark on the win as they lead it by 27 points at the 18-minute mark of this final quarter. It's not through yet, though. A toughish type angle. No breeze to speak of at the Morwell Rec Reserve this afternoon. Has to kick it probably right to left, but only marginal. He starts it right. It doesn't oh, quite geez. come back enough, and it stays on its trajectory and it misses for a minor score. Take, take, one, take it to 12.779 on the Harvey Cook Norman Computer Scoreboard. Leading sale, 7.951. Did he say that right, Poppy? Uh, it was close enough. I knew what he meant. quite I got that out, I think <laughs> There's a couple of letters not in the right spot. <laughs> Here we go. One thing you're going to... Keep uh, the pressure on. A quick kick from a standing start. Ryan Sparks out of play on the full. One thaggy, 12 7, sale 7 9. 16 and a half minutes gone. Remembering we lost three or four minutes as an injured player came off the ground. Six minutes in total. So we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve. I tell you what, I've seen games won and lost by this far before. This quarter might actually go 30 minutes. Oh, it might go 30 minutes, you're right. <laughs> I've got Which an A-grade netball score for you. Sorry, uh, yep. Poppy. Fly it's away. Lee and Gatha, 63, defeated Mowie, 34. Wow. OK, Brad Descent plays on quickly, finds Taint. Taint needs to find a teammate. He can. Nicely done. Oh, geez, coming down awkwardly there was a the player in Jesse Collins. Called his name a bit in this last quarter. 50. All 50-metre penalty. Yeah, it's a dangerous one when you come off that mark instinctively. And now big man Leslie, who has the ball, has to give it back to Jesse Collins. And... Just based on that kick, I reckon this distance may test him. Oh, no, wait, wait a minute. How far's the umpire gone? Well, he's just going where Jack Leslie marked it, which I'm not sure is well, 50. I reckon Jack Leslie <laughs> marked it 10 minutes closer to where... Uh, no, anyway, it right. doesn't matter. He can all of a sudden make the distance. I tell you right now, if he kicks this goal, they're four kicks down with over 10 minutes left, you'd think. Yep. Or maybe 10 minutes. Yep. Easily. Are you saying? All you'd need is Brad Descent to suddenly start clunking a few, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, so here we go. Jesse Collins. How many of goals, opportunities like this have they missed today? This is the issue. Yep. Jesse Collins. Oh, there well, we he's go. done his bit. He's done his bit. Stranger things have happened. I can tell you. I've been on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse Collins now has got his first, and Sale so are inside four goals. If you think Sale so, come back and win this, I think you'll be in sniffing something that I have Well, there's, there's an before. old saying, whether you I'll think you can or whether you think you can't, you're probably right. So uh, I, I, if that I means... I agree with that. that I'm, means, I, I'm not giving... The, I haven't got that give up. No, you haven't. But I'm saying that you can see the way one thaggy are playing. They've got the ascendancy on... They the have. Right. In but, this quarter... Inside not, 50s, not, Paul? Not in this Inside quarter. Inside 50s, it's 9 3 sales way this quarter. But if one thaggy plays smart. Yes. And yes. We're down, down to a 22 point margin at the 21 minute mark. I agree. If Here they go. played smart in the last fortnight, they would have been in the final stage. Here they go, the Magpies. A strong tackle from McLaren's not rewarded. Don't give me that Something's look. Something's building. Right now, I'll clean you up. Let's have a look. Something's <laughs> building. McGuinness going now. Bray takes a ruck duty. Here, Here comes Johnson. He delivers the towards half forward. Just gets away from Knowles. No, he does nicely, does Knowles. Hamble over the top to Jared Blair. Neat little kick. And nicely done, Harry Dawson. Calls for it and takes the mark. Dawson Where's Harley. Dawson Harley is uh, not out there at the moment. I can't find him. He goes in board to Jack Blair. Oh. Kick was smothered by Collins's head. Dawson goes back, handles over the shoulder. No one really there. Oh. And now Scott will just kick it out of bounds on the full. Nice little mark by number two of the trainer. And doesn't count, though. No. Which bound no. has it? Can they get to the open side and run it? McGuinness says, all right, I'll take it and I'll handle across to Mitch Bound. And he drives it down towards Jack Leslie direction, who can fly. A big spoil over the back there was from Knowles. And Bray was there as well. And we're going to stop each half-forward flank build-up for the Magpies. They trail by 22 points. Final quarter. Here we go. Left half-forward flank. Umpire instructs what his intentions are. McGuinness gets the tap down. Can he find a winner? Lang fights hard. Nicely done. Quick kick out of the pack. I reckon it might find touch. It does. And that's as good as a possession. 
as the clock slowly winds its way down. Poppy progressive scores in the North Gippy and it's TTU 14 13 97 to your Lawn North 4 10 34. Wow, playing 10 that's, a loss that can, that's a loss that can hurt you for greater than a week, let me tell you. That's not what they thought. Wow, well, no way. The Jets getting beaten by 10 goals. I don't reckon they've been beaten by 10 goals for three or four years. That's how good they've been. Gee, but that is a uh, that is a big shock. And the big, talk, big will, shock. talk will be it's the loss they needed to have. But well, yeah, well, ten what, goals is huge. Yeah, that's what you say when you lose. Yep. But they're becoming renowned for losing those games. One premiership in 25 years in mid Gippsland, mm. and they've been good. But they need to deliver on the big days. Well, they'll get us another chance, and that's a good thing about footy. So we'll get another chance too. But they want to take this one. Jack Johnson left half forward flank to towards. That man in Campbell. Oh, Campbell poor kick. dances. The kick is poor. Oh. oh, the mark that should have been taken was it, but the numbers at the ball favour the one thaggy side in Bates and Blair, who's been so very good, now goes short and goes towards the outer side of the ground. Shannon Lang's down as well, boys. Keep an eye on that boxer. And lands in the hands of Tiziani with a football of power. He chips it over the top. He's found a teammate. Half forward flank build up. They lean back on the kick, but that's going to be turned over. And the mark will be taken back there. This time it's by Glenn. His chip kick inboard to Tainch. Shannon Lang comes off. Tainch has it half back flank. It's too slow. They've got to start moving it. We've gone 24 minutes, gone 25 now. Gets to the back there, Leslie and Bates. Free kick will go to Leslie. Can't pay the advantage. And the other one hobbling here is Brad Descent on the bench. So Sale are in all sorts of strife. They've got another game to play next week, so. It'll be interesting to see Mitch Thacker's out with a knee as well. I hope to have him back as a back out on the field. Leslie puts it into forward 50. Desert will fly, and he takes the mark, and he clunks one. And he's got to turn around and hurry up. That's Des Leslie. That's Leslie. Oh, not Le it's Jack Leslie, sorry. Oh, we were just talking about Brad Desson, weren't yeah, we? we? He was holding his lower back and hobbling. Well, directly in front, big Jack Leslie. He's been the sole contributor for the Magpies so far. For Gippsland, Izuzu Ute. The margins at 22. Leslie puts it through. And there might just be a little bit of life in the Magpie yet box. There might be a little bit of a sniff there, but I just doubt. Uh, I think uh, one thing he will still win it. But uh, the Brad Desson injury there could have been the result from that bump uh, because, because Professor Giddens in the Legends Bar has informed me that it was a clean bump, but he did come off second best okay. as well. So uh, he's off the ground now. You can see he's in a fair bit of pain too. So, but... They've got to do it now without him and Lang, who's still off the ground at the moment. So, big ask for me. It's a 26-minute uh, mark, so it's probably three, still three or four minutes to go. And it's 16-point margin, 12-7-79, Montague, 9-9-63 sale. And Harvey Norman could be at a scoreboard. I still can't... You can't believe you called uh, Craig Giddens a professor. No one has ever said those words together, ever. As they go forward, Wontaggy, they get it to the top of their 50. Here's Penelope. Kicks off the ground. Glenn tries to run and tap it in front, but he loses the football. Kicked around the body, was smothered Noah Anderson, and Glenn did well. The Magpies. Good contest. It was. They've got to have a bit of risk and reward now, Boxer. It has to be now. They've just got to roll the dice and say, right, oh, let's get it on. Game on. Get Lang back on the ground. Well, he's uh, struggling a bit at the moment. Ball comes back into the field. McGuinness taps it down to McLaren. Had one arm grabbed as he couldn't grab the football. Hard out of the football there was Lindsay. And we'll have another stoppage right on the top of their 50. And one thing you need to build. They need to hold on. They've kicked two goals of Magpies in the final quarter. One thing you haven't kicked one. Down at ground level. Squeezed a handle out. Dawson to Lindsay. Good tackle from Freeman. Holding the ball. Do they take the advantage? No. As a free kick goes to Jared Freeman across half back. Go in the middle of the ground, Jared. Unleash something, some run and carry. He goes to centre half back where Penderbury has it. His chip goes in the middle to Whitehill. Finds him. Can they wheel and go? And Cooper Whitehill just decides to slow things up. Not I sure think you've why. got to start to move the football. You trail by 16 points late in the last quarter. Now he goes. Going back. Oh, Blair stood in the hole. Leslie crunched him. And Jared Blair took the courageous mark, picks himself up, and says, I'll be paid the mark, the free kick. I don't care. And he'll milk the clock as much as he can. Mm -hmm. And he squares the kick out wide nicely to Hutchison. Yeah, Hutchison, who's been pretty busy, pretty quick, done his bit. And there's so many players in this one thaggy side who have done their bit. Salo had their chances, but they're going to come up short, you'd think, as Hutchison goes... Long, but Pendlebury, 
Right half back flank on that left leg, tries searching for some room in the corridor. Can't find a teammate, but they've got the numbers at grand level, but only momentarily before the umpire will assume control I think and ball this one back up. I think it's a nose issue for Shannon Lang, but he looks to be right and coming back on the ground. Ball thrown up. McGuinness has front position, gets the tap, but can't find a teammate, and that's the key. I tell you what, a free kick's been paid by 75 metres away. The umpire not in control again is going to go one thaggy's way. And now, has he paid it for an incident off the ball? He, no. he has. Oh, has he? Against Leslie, yeah. Okay, so Ryan Sparks now. Fair enough. We'll find Dawson. Left half forward flank. 65 metres from home is Dawson. He holds the ball up, and you don't begrudge him that right at this stage of the game. And he just stops and kicks the ball up in the air, hoping that a uh, teammate will find oh. it. He can't. It's uh, been taken by Todd. Comes towards the grandstand side, and there we go. The first final has been run, and it's been won. Yeah, and one taggy. Well, they are the victors on the back of one man, Troy Harley. They had a few good contributors across the middle part of the ground as well. The Blair Broys were fantastic. But they win, and they go into a second semi-final against their arch-rival and nemesis down in South Gippsland, and that is Lee and Gather, a juicy second semi-final will take place next week. We've got a big game to wrap up here for the Mulwell Rec Reserve. One thingy, win it, and they win it without kicking a score. In uh, They kick one point, sorry, in the final quarter. 12-7-79, the Power have defeated the Magpies, 9-9-63. The post-game of Gippsland Live is coming up right after the break. It's all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Hey, Tim and Joel. Hey, we spun up net worth. I give you a billionaire, you tell us the closest net worth without going over. You know why I'm not very good at this game? Because money doesn't, money doesn't impress me. It doesn't. No, my it doesn't. Doesn't. It doesn't. What's money, happened? Money doesn't make you happy. I've never, I've never Googled how much someone's worth. Hey, Tim and Joel. Driving you home from five. On TRFM. Harvey Norman, your destination for outdoor living. New season range in store now. The latest trends in timber, aluminium, rope and wicker. Outdoor lounges, dining, bar settings and more. With selected stock available for immediate delivery. Get 60 months interest free, no deposit, no interest from Latitude with 60 approximately equal monthly payments and receive a bonus gift card up to $1,000. Finance only available if you have or are approved for a participating Latitude credit card. Minimum finance amount $1,000. CTs and Cs. Interest applies for non-compliance. Fees and product exclusions apply. Get ready for outdoor living at Harvey Norman. You hit the road early, it's a long drive, and you're starting to get a little weary from the sun in your eyes. Driving tired can have the same effect as driving drunk. If you've been on the road for two hours, take a 15-minute break. Stop in at the nearest McDonald's restaurant in Gippsland. It's the perfect place to stop. You can stretch your legs, enjoy a coffee from a cafe, or grab a quick snack. A 15-minute break every two hours could help save your life. Another road safety message from McDonald's Gippsland. Road safe and Gippsland's own TRFM. The Isuzu D-Max is born to live. You can go your own way. With three and a half ton towing, you can bring all the toys. Get off road and play with 4x4 Terrain Command and a rear diff lock. And rock out with Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Plus, with a five-star ANCAP safety rating, the three-litre turbo diesel Isuzu D-Max is born to live. Test drive today at Gippsland Isuzu Ute on the Princess Highway to Relgan, LMCT 10285. Hear that? That's the beautiful sound of the Morwell Bowling Club Bistro. The perfect atmosphere for a post-win feed or a sorrow-drowning loss. Especially because Saturday is pot and parma night. Choose from the selection of yummy parma toppings. Only $20 every Saturday from 5.30pm. Includes a pot of beer, soft drink or a glass of wine. To make a booking, phone the club on 5134 3449. 52 Hazelwood Road Mall. Visit the website morewellbowls.com.au for other specials during the week. Vern Graham in Hayfield, your local Mitre 10 store. The team can help you whether you're painting the kids' room, doing some renovating outside or building a house. From taps to